The greatest feeling in the world was holding my own gun. I'm hypertensive, but all my decisions been wholesome. My independence had me flipping on siblings I stole from. Said I'm just big and loud. Well, half a pound is my silent treatment. I punched out plugs I could have stopped from eating. Stash of the Prada. That's how a nigga got up. Gun in the mass in the grass, it's a pop up. I was Robin Hood with the stock, don't get shot up. Now I'm watching Robin Hood in my stocks, they just shot up. All right, we back. My expert opinion show, the greatest show in the world. World, 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 world. Unity. Black people unity. Hit that like, hit that share. Let everybody know you ain't here. Don't cost you no paper unless you's a motherfucker. Hater, 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 Get him, chat. Hater, mm, Hey, he joined it. In. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. That's, that's, that's what it's about, man. That's that production. That's I that got production. whatever on my man Chip. What's up? <laughs> Where you at, Dougie? <laughs> Sheesh. Let me stop, let me stop. Nah, 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 you don't want you that can't smoke keep with Dougie, though. That's keep, the OG, he, triple OG, man. He keep moonwalking that back. He say it, then he. I'm gonna bring it to fruition, right? Yeah. He's just gonna pop up right at the barbershop. With, with, a, let's with, go a, with a megaphone. <laughs> with a with a megaphone and some some limited. Like, all right, fuck it. This is happening. Shout out to my man Gusto. I, I ain't even gonna say the words. What up, champ? What's good, my guys? How you holding, cousin? Everything's good. Everything's great. I'm happy to be free. Happy to be alive. Not around fuck niggas. Around great people, legends. Um, shout out to Matt. He couldn't make it today, but he will be back. Feel better. Um, and everything is great, man. No complaints. Chas, how you holding? I'm amazing. Blessed. Grateful. Oh, we're gonna golf clap that. We're gonna, we're gonna golf clap. <laughs> Get a golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the squad. Everybody on it. Everybody on the bleachers, salute, salute. salute. Sh shout out to Commando holding the door down. Yeah. He, right. He's not paying any Don't attention. Don't fuck with Commando, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man. Gat, how you feeling? I'm good, man. Yo, I want everybody to go check out that My Body video shot by my man KK. Now on Gat Murder Vivo right now. Go stream that, go run it up. I'm back outside. Mm. This ain't about me right now. We here with the legend. <laughs> when the are you legend. ever inside? <laughs> you sound back I'm outside belly. like you're in the barbershop. Nah, I'm, in the barbershop. I'm back outside. I'm back outside, man. Gat Gat. Murder back outside. Gat facts. Gat, you live outside. That's not true. That's very true. Now, you make me sound like I'm homeless or something. <laughs> Gat, you live outside. I think that you, sound horrible. I think you live in any home you feel like it. That sound worse. What I said to you last <laughs> night, bro. That sound worse, boy. I don't think you. I don't think you homeless. I just don't think you like. Now nah, I'm an outside nigga. You got to be outside, man. I'm not Working. mad. At him. I'm just, I don't know how you do it. Cause I can. You, I can don't leave. act like you ain't outside with me, Mac. We've been in spots together, man. Nah, don't yeah. throw me under the bus the when thing, you though. outside next, right, right next to me. Here's my the thing, nigga. though. When I leave and I go someplace else, you already there. Before, <laughs> before Stop I show it. Up. You be there before me <laughs> that's sometimes. A, that's bullshit. That's gas. That never, ha never happens. Yo, where you at? Behind me. You be right Pause. there. Don't ever say never that again. Mind. <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind. Oh, See, the next that's not happening. We here. No, never mind. Anyway, we can sit here and talk about big Brooklyn. We can talk about big Harlem. We can talk about big Queens. Talk about big Bronx. Talk about big Staten Island. And if you if you saying it like that, that's a that's a gat phrase. Fact. Gat came up with all that. But good music is universal. Right. Good music goes to any hood, any town, any country, any state, anywhere. And the dude we have in the chair tonight is a connoisseur of that, a creator of that, and a witness to that statement because all he does is make good music that goes worldwide. And tonight, we're going to get a quick look, we're going to get a real look at how he's managed to pull that off. Queens legend, music legend, executive producer, Shaw Money excels in the building. Yes, sir. Shaw Money. I don't need <laughs> Queen, see he said it first. Queens Yo, look, I, I'm not Queens we're not arguing. Oh, Queens get the money. We're not in Queens get the money. We not in competition. BQE, you, you know what I'm saying? BQE shit it's in the building. It's all connected. It's all connected. Yeah, we all started in Brooklyn. I started in Brooklyn. Hell yeah, y'all Queens niggas was always in Brooklyn. I ain't man. never gonna hear the end of that now that you said that. I'm never gonna hear the end. You know, Brooklyn I got niggas was always in Queens too. I mean, bro, we just I just wish y'all would stop that. BQE, nigga. I can't we just 
Say that from now. You want me to say that from now on? BQE, man. I'll say that from have now on. Have some respect. Put some respect on our brother. I got to have some respect. Come up in here. You know a Queens nigga was coming in here today. Queens get the money. You made sure you wore that t-shirt, man. That's a fact. Got facts. That's I see a, you. I like you, though, man. What else was I going to do? Shy Money, Shy, Shy is one of those dudes who, when you start talking about Queens, if you know, you know. Right. You know I mean, like, people know his name from, I'm talking about you like you're not here. People know his name from the business. They know his work. They know his resume. Mm-hmm. But if you're from Queens, stories like Shy is some of those inspiring stories that, yo, this dude, look what he did. I can, I can do that. Like, right. Because he did it, maybe there's a way that I can. Or he came from the exact same spot. Or look, he's he's Haitian, like you know what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. all all the all the things. Right. He's just like me. I think I can pull this off. Do you do you walk around knowing that that kind that those kind of eyes are on you? That people are really. Actually, it's crazy you say that because my Instagram is Shaw Money Motivation. Mm-hmm. So huh. my, my whole thing is about being motivated. You know what I mean? Motivating the next generation. Someone on the same level as me, even someone higher than me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So motivation, all of that is about, I'm all about that. I think part of the problem with Instagram is it's it's good for seeing the results and not necessarily the work. You know what I mean? People want to mimic the results and not the road. Mm-hmm. And your road isn't necessarily on your Instagram. That's your true. highlights are. That's you know right. what I mean? Like, But your road is crazy. Like where you started versus where you are now. Are two completely. I know it's two different places, but you wouldn't predict one from looking at the other. Facts. Like, how did you? Let's let's start with the yeah, history. chronologically. Chronologically, man. So should have stayed in Job Corps. I started in Job Corps, man. After I, I left, I dropped out of high school, went to Job Corps, and then uh, started DJing. Why'd you drop out? I just, I for one, I went to Catholic school first to eighth grade. Right. Mm. So as soon as I went to public school and I went to Jamaica, I was from the north side. I was a bunch around a bunch of lost boys and south side had it just felt different. So I'm mm. like, yo, I ain't even go to school in my hood. So I just started hanging out with the homies in the hood and just just kicking it because I just didn't want to go to school. Mm. And then the next year they was like, yo, you need to you come on, you can't do that. Moms was tripping, seeing all the the, you know, absent notes and all that. Mm. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Job Corps. I'm going to go get a trade and I'm going to go get my GD. Mm-hmm. And when I got to Job Corps, that was like my first time DJing in front of a whole bunch of people. Mm. And that was the whole part that let me see like, wait a second. How do you end up DJing yeah. in the Job Corps? Oh, well, I mean, of course I was DJing in the hood before that, you know, in my crib. I wasn't doing no mixtapes or nothing like that, but I was DJing in the crib. As well as you know, just trying to get into this music because I, I started off playing piano as a kid, you know, 13 years old, 11 years old, just all through my ch- childhood, and then eventually I just like yo, I could I could hear the music in that. I want to start DJing. Just started buying records, cassettes, tapes, everything I could get, and it just got into the music business. Just first like, turntables. Yeah, got into, yeah, first turntables didn't even have 1200s. Them joints still, you had to hold, wait to go in, wait to drop. Mm. Using pop joints, you know what I mean. So mm. I ain't had no money, man. You know what I mean. <laughs> really broke, so I ain't really have no no options. So that was the first time actually using that. Then my cousin who kid, he had some turntables, and then we would go back and forth. I would go to his crib up in his attic, and he would have two turntables, and then that was the whole DJ. So thing. was who kid DJing first, or it was you? I would like to say I was DJing first. Mm-hmm. I'm younger than him, right? But um, I definitely could say I was DJing first. And it mm. was he was shortly after. It's mm. almost the same time, if months apart, if, if not a year. I didn't know that was your cousin. Yeah, that's yeah. cuz, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. something new. Yeah, All in yeah, the family. Yeah, DJ Who Kid. All in the family. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's the cuz right there, you know? So he should be here next is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, so, you know, we, so we, you know, we go from DJing, then we go into the school, but the first time I seen a crowd responding to my music or just me doing something where I like, yo, I like this energy, was in Job Corps. That's where it really started for me. Who got you the gig? Yo, honestly, I guess they didn't have no DJs in sight. So mm. I was in the mix. As soon as I got there, just talking, social, being with everybody. And they was like, yo, Friday nights is the party night. It's the end of the week. We need to go into the to the cafeteria and we got to play some music. I was like, yo, I'll DJ. I got I know how to DJ. It's like, you do? I was like, yeah. And I took it. And that's when it started. And then from mm. there, one party leads to another party? From Job Corps, back to New York, got my GED. So mom's like, oh. Your friends is in 11th grade. 
I got my GD when my my class my classmates is in eleventh grade. Mm -hmm. You better go to college. And I'm like, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to college. <laughs> you know what I mean? High school was kicking your ass, so the yeah. next place you should go is college. Yeah. I wasn't really a school dude, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it was what my family wanted, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to be the right, do the right thing, you know what I mean? So eventually I get into LIU, get into this program, because my math scores is crazy. So they, they ended up giving me the free tuition and everything. Mm. And then from that point, I ended up at NYU mm. and got into this marketing program that was really built around marketing. And that's where it really started when I got to NYU. Um, Pro production started or DJing started <clears throat> more so at NYU? Production started later on. 17 years old. I get out of prison. You was whoa, locked up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What Hold the up, fuck? Yeah, Shock. Come on, bro. You you yo, rewind. we all over the place, right? right so so I, you I, all over I, the place. I, 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 following yo, <laughs> you was at NYU. Yes. And you said that's where it started. That's where what started? Me getting into the game, like industry, like interning at Def Jam, being around everybody. How did those opportunities come to you? Just me reading Diddy's story, knowing that he was an intern, got mm. into Uptown, and then he was he got up. So I was influenced by someone like him, seeing that he interned. That's how you get in. You working right. for free, you paying mm -hmm. your dues. Right. So you could get in, but you got to get in through a college. Right, right, You right. can't just be an intern. And that's the whack part. You know what I mean? So okay. for me, that's, that's where I really got in the game part. Mm -hmm. But starting before that, I was actually DJing, and then producing. But my first production started when I got out of jail and I wanted to rap. You and keep I didn't have over that jail part. I yo, mean, why, how, yeah. how, I thought you didn't go There's to a high gap school. Right you know, we went to Job Corps and you were fine. Now all of a sudden you coming home from jail. Right? <laughs> yeah. So all right, after Job Corps. Um, after Job Corps, after you got Job Corps. Up? Yep, yep. I was in Albany Job Corps, and I wanted to buy some equipment. Now SB12. MPC, them joints mm -hmm. like two grand, three grand. Uh, um, my boy Gavin Ray gave me a, a, a SB12, but it was it wasn't working, mm -hmm. so I couldn't do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. So then my next thought was like, yo, I'm gonna get one. It was like, yo, we could go up to Harlem, sell, go get some, and go back to Albany, and go sell some shit. You come back with at least two grand. And I'm like, yo, I come back, I'm gonna have two grand. So I went with the homies, my boy, <laughs> change of guard, Geo, and boom. <laughs> and um, and we went up to, to back to Albany, and two days later, I'm in Albany County, locked up. So you you never got any type of spidey sense, like yo, maybe this ain't the right thing to do. Well, I was selling in the hood too, so, All right, so you I was already, already used. You was already numb. Yeah, to yeah, it. yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get some sneakers and some. Some sandwiches, you know what I mean? Just hustling on some sneakers. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't no young big niggas. Hustler, niggas you know used mean? to hustle for yeah, some dumb yeah. shit. Like, yeah, that's a fact. like, yo, you out we here putting young. your life on the this line is, for Jordan. This is 15, 16, you know what I mean? Right. So we in the hood just trying to survive. Right. And, so you and, wasn't just not going to school, you was also doing dumb shit. Yeah, I was doing dumb shit. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you, you yeah. keep moonwalking. Complete change, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was wilding out back then. So what they the the fuzz ran down on you, they knocked you with the work? Yeah, so boom. So they came up on the block, we were selling, and boom. They found the stash. They first they found my man's stash, then they found mine. So I got caught with everything. Damn, and you know, damn. I ain't no snitch, so I just took right. the whole shit and I ended up doing a year in prison. So you oh, sacrificed you for that bit. equipment? Yeah, I did county, yeah, yeah. Albany, yeah. Sacrifice for that equipment. Yeah, but Came I didn't get the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Until later. Until a later. year later, then I had to figure it out. <laughs> Still so, gotta figure it out. Yeah, but it, yeah, it started, you know, it started from there, from Job Corps and then into college. That's when my real Stuff started, but the creative part was always through the whole time. You know what I? You know what I wonder if street life had been good to you, would we still have the same shot money? Like had had you you did a year, but imagine if that first flip would have worked and you'd have got two grand. Would they have kind of a time where it's like if I would have kept one to flip, right? Maybe this is a little. It'd have been shot money the hustler. <laughs> yeah. Now I always had this dream of being in the in the music business and trying to you know really make it. So I had a vision real early, and that's what I be trying to tell my kids and everything. Like I knew who I wanted to be when I was thirteen. Mm. You know what I mean? So having that vision early and just like yo, I'm gonna do this and do that. I'm gonna do this to get that, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing that to just to make that my career. Mm. Right. So that was just an option to get that bread because there was no other way to get that bread. Mm. Why do we have so many as many stories as we have that come through here where it's like it's the opposite? Like they start off in the streets, they stay in the streets, and then they find music later on mm -hmm. 
after the street life, or they find right. it's, it's a transition to get out of the streets versus somebody who literally was using the streets to get into music. I don't think we've ever. I don't think I've ever heard that specific. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I think. I think. It, a, and it's the truth. I think what people miss is that because of the passion and the, and the desire mm-hmm. for for that thing. Well, music specifically, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're so passionate about it, you're willing to risk whatever to get to that goal. You know what I mean? No matter what it is, mm-hmm. and, and some of the some of the greatest people that are successful in different forms of business mm-hmm. took crazy risks. Oh, fact. crazy risks no, to get to where they got to go because that no burning risk, inside no reward, of man. No, mm-hmm. you gotta have yeah. a risk, but man. You got what, to. Mm-hmm. what I'm finding different is there's one thing when it comes to someone who's passionate about the art, and it's another thing with someone who's passionate about making money. And if you're passionate yeah. about making money, you'll stay in the streets because it's more money and it's faster. But it's high, it's a higher risk. Yeah. But we rarely hear about somebody who's so passionate about art that they're willing to risk their freedom in order to make art. That I barely ever, short of graffiti heads who get locked up for <laughs> yeah. putting up murals and shit. You don't hear about people risking their freedom to make art. This is the first. I time think I've heard I think the majority of artists do though. You know what I mean? They in the street hustling, pay for that studio time, pay to get it mixed, pay for beats. You know what I'm saying? Video, Pre- that whatever they I, can I get. I've heard. I've heard. Most now. most rap niggas, no, well niggas that try to get in the game, started off hustling. You know what I mean? Like, damn, I'm gonna get this up. I'm gonna do that. Same situation with you with the um beat mm-hmm. machines and all of that. It's the same thing You're with right. artists. You are right? I have, I don't. I don't. I a don't lot of them are dreamers, so they be having this vision. I'm gonna make it. So they never want to work. They never want to do anything. <laughs> and the easiest work you could do is in the hood, in the right, streets, because right. it's not labor. And studio flip. studio you know time is fifty dollars an hour, hundred dollars an hour, depending on where you go. It ain't on. cheap, and especially back then. Back then, exactly. Uh, it's you know cheaper what I'm saying? now. Going to power play all the studios back then. And them joints was crazy expensive, and mm. we didn't really have money, so mm. we had to do get it by any means. Who and was, was with you? you? You keep saying we. Who else was it? So I had this homie P. Dap from my hood, who used to be on DJ Clue mixtapes. Mm. He was like the first known rapper that everyone started hearing on the mixtapes. And I was in the same hood with him, so I started producing his tracks. And that started getting out, you know what I mean? But that was, when I say we, that was the beginning of teamwork. He was like one of the first people I ever worked with that actually people knew who he was mm-hmm. on freestyles with Fat Joe and Chubb, you know, all everybody on Clue Tape, Nature, mm-hmm. Nas, all of them. And he would be on that mix with him. And I was like, yo, he gonna make it. So I started producing for him, getting in the studio with him. He ain't have no money. Mm. So I'm trying to find ways for us to get in the studio because I really wanted to create. So sometimes I cover the studio bill just because I want to make some music and get, right, right. Get, get to the get to the goal. Is this is this during the internship or? Yeah, during the internship, it was him. Pete App was the first one from my hood that actually rose above. And then after that, I started, you know, being from Queens, started stepping out, going to Queensbridge, Tragedy Gaddafi, Cormega, you know what I'm saying? Going to Flushing, Royal Flush, you know what I mean? Going to Brooklyn, half a mil. You rest know in what I mean? Peace, rest in rest peace, in peace, rest half peace. a mil. You know what I'm saying? So anyone I could get to, I was trying to get to them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that was me just being a producer. Where, where did it. you intern for first? Def Jam. Only place Def I interned. That was the only place I first interned. First and last. First and last. <laughs> After that, I met Jam Master J, and it right. was on from there. And then you went on to get a like big executive role at Def Jam. Yeah, but that was years down the line. But that's my Almost, point. Right. Yeah, this intern is this '96. In. I was intern. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? '96, '97, '98. That's when mean? it was popping. Yeah. Wait, so you had five, you had Method Man there at that time. What other artists were there at that time when you were interning? Oh man, Case, Foxy Brown, Red Man, Method Man, Onyx. Right. Yeah, Def Jam was JMJ loaded. Jam had. Afro, L- L- Afros and LL. It was he had no doubt with uh, Dante Ross. He right. had Smooth the Hustler, Trigger the Gambler. Mm-hmm. You had Violator with uh, um, Chris Lighty at his office, and he right, was just right. getting started. Cormega was his first artist, mm-hmm. and that was my first check, just being in that building. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's just crazy. working the project? Well, I didn't get it from being in that building. I got it from also being on the street team. So I just started moving around the game and just trying to be around everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's how you get on. You just got to be outside, bro. Really be outside in the mix. That's yeah, Mac. You got to be outside, <laughs> Mac. That's what we do. Whether that's I was in the do. marketing, doing whatever Julie Greenwald said, get some coffee, pick up the phone. This other girl, Heidi Skushler and, and Shanita Floyd, I was just doing whatever they told me. But when it came to the footwork, street team. Mm. That's when you're really in the mix. Mm-hmm. Right, and right. you get to be backstage or close to the stage and around things. 
Cormega coming on stage, I'm handing out Nas. It was written books. I gave him a beat tape. Mm. Angel Dust was on that tape. That's mm. my first track, so. See, that's your first placement. First place. What wow. I'm hearing is a lot of a lot of swallowing your pride in order to get where you want to go. Yeah. A lot of a lot of the examples you're giving, I've pitched to other artists, and I hear you. I ain't trying to play myself. Not the ego. What I look like getting somebody coffee. What I look like. I ain't doing that shit. No, I don't want nigga to look. You think I'm a dick rider or nothing man. like that. You gotta pay your dues. The ego be in the way for a lot of us, man. Right. We we trying to make it. You gotta sacrifice. You gotta do some things you don't want to do. Oh, Not nah. willing to do just to get to it. You know what I mean? Not nothing crazy though. Yeah, it depends. But you know, shit. You gotta get coffee. Whatever you gotta do, man. Just get the work done. Build a relationship. Build a trust. Let them know you about it, and then they are gonna take you in. And that's how you get in. That's right. Go to that store. Get them sodas. <laughs> Go get that. You know what I mean? Yo, Russell had get me that bud in his, for me. In his uh, Rolls Royce because he didn't want to pay for parking. Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons. Shout out mm. to Kenny Lee. Kenny Lee was his driver. He had a label also at Def Jam, RAL, back in the days. And he was the driver, but he was upstairs also in the mix with his label. Mm -hmm. So they were like, instead of paying for parking, 60, 80 hours a day, yo, shy, go sit in the car. So I'm sitting there, if Russell's just in for two meetings, and then he's out, he don't want to pay for parking, I'm sitting in the car. You know wow, what I mean? Those are the kind crazy. of dudes you pay. Ticket lady come, she sees someone in the car, they keep She's walking. moving, right, right. Mm -hmm. That's a even that's a glamorous even that is kind of a glamorous story. Like <laughs> I, mean, I was sitting, sitting in, in Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. Sitting in a Russell Simmons, Simmons, Russell yeah. Simmons Rolls. Yeah. Nineteen years old doing that, yeah. I mean, but that's what that whole opportunity brings. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, you, that's what that's what yeah. being outside brings, Max. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> being in the he was inside the car. Shut up. <laughs> outside. <laughs> what was what was like some of the the craziest things that you've seen in that building being an intern? All right, so um, the craziest thing I seen, I mean, shout out to Ed Lover. Um, his sister was the, the receptionist. Mm. And she used to have to deal with all kind of people just coming up to 160 Barrett. Mm. And they, that's when they had to really get security. And they had some real hood dudes in the security. It wasn't professional security. <laughs> like, yeah, I got here. They ain't really on security. <laughs> so it was just kind of wild. You would see everyone trying to get on, getting upstairs and trying to get in. And, and you would just see everybody like, just kind of like the rest of the office just moving away and nobody was in the mix with that. But everyone, mm. you know, just, just seeing the hood come to the building. Right. I was like, wow, there are people really trying to get on. You would see Mob Deep and them standing in front, everyone just trying to just get on. So seeing that, just let me see the hung up. Everyone coming from wherever they was from, trying to, wherever they can get, whether they standing in front of Def Jam, High 97, they gonna stand there until they get in. If they can get in the building, they gonna be banging on doors. So, I mean, other than that, Behind the doors was quiet. Everybody right. on their label shit. But for me, that was the first time I seen a whole bunch of black employees anywhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. I walk in, you know, besides Leo Cohen and, and Julie Greenwald and a few others, but in, in Dante, Russell had a real staff of black people. And I was like, inspired. Mm. Like, wow. Like, he really hired his people. Like, he really got a whole bunch of us in here. I ain't, I ain't see that to this day, to right, be honest. Right. Ain't a label I've seen like that right now to this day, where it's a whole mm. bunch of us in there standing mm, yeah. positions. It's Mike Kaiser early, you know, days, you know what I mean? Yeah, shout out Chris Lighty early yeah. days, you know what I mean? Rest Jam Master J, Rest in peace. Randy Allen, everybody was in there. Peter mm. Thomas with How Can I Be Down. It was mm. everybody in there. Wow. You know what I mean? That's throwback shit. Andre Harrell walking in and out, mm. battling him. I don't do R&B, but he doing hip hop. So, but that was his homie. And the unity, you seen that. And mm. I was like, yo, when I get there, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hire all my peoples, all my brothers, good people, talent, and they, they really got the skills. How long were you there for at Def Jam? I was at Def Jam for at least three years. Three years. Yeah. So you got a lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge, a lot of relationships, a lot of time in. That time in is important. Mm. Why? Because you, you spend one day with someone, they don't really get to know you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Jay, tell me, yo, come to Queens. Meet me in Queens. You go... To Rosedale, chill with him, Randy Allen, Baja, and all of them. Next thing you know, you spend it real time and they get to see a character. And then when he seen me respond to certain things and and he was like, no, oh, he's really into this. Mm -hmm. So that time, you really gotta put that time in. You ain't gonna figure out someone out in one day. But why do you think it is that so many, so many people with ambitions, with music ambitions, think that it happens overnight? 
because everyone is speeding right now. Everyone is like a like an Instagram scroll. They ain't got no real patience and no time. They don't got no value for that. You know what I mean? Attention is different now. So everyone wants things fast. Like, Listen, I want gratification. Now, gratification mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? This should take years to build up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was me putting my dues in early to get where I'm at now. That's like a curse word, though. When you tell people it takes years, mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who wants to hear nah, that. Nah, nobody want to hear that. Not Definitely not an artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've seen the best of them, like, you know what I mean? Three, four years before they made it, yo. You know what I mean? And the ones that make it in that quick time, I promise you it's just as quick as they stop. What was it about yeah. you that made everybody take a liking to you? So for me, social, chilling, outside, wasn't tied up. I even had a whip, had an MPV. So I could pull up, you know what I mean? I wasn't taking the train to the city. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I mean? I was available. Mm -hmm. And then at NYU, they had a radio station. So at nighttime, Martin Moore and Mayhem mm. was up there. And I'm seeing all the underground MCs now. Mm -hmm. This is where Punchline, Wordsworth, you know, AL, all of them start coming up. And Shout I'm out like, to You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. all of them AL. start coming in. And I'm like, wait a second. And then... Cypher sounds, and I start meeting everyone that's now legends and people that really paved the way right at the station. Now, going mm -hmm. up to NYU radio was a reason, another reason why I stayed up there a long time because Martin Moore and Mayhem had a jam, and I stole a whole bunch of records too. So, <laughs> so yeah, I was up there collecting records fits. to sample. The they lesson, had a library up there. The lesson here is time, though. The lesson here is time. It don't happen overnight. Nah, like, I don't. That's, that's the big lesson I'm getting from all of this. Like, paint, first I, I one was more, I, mean, I hear desire. I hear more of desire than time. Like, because desire when you desire come. something, it don't matter how much time it takes for you to reach your goal, you're going to keep going through whatever it is yeah, you to get to that point. Too, I used, I yeah, used, to, I used to think that. That's key. But that's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm seeing coming back these days. It's not a matter. Like, they want it, but they feel like they deserve it because they want it. Not because they've done anything to earn it. Right. Which is a completely different thing. Like him saying Tom, 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 it's like a curse word to mm -hmm. most people. Like, mm -hmm. bro, it's going to take like two, three years. Nah, but I've been an artist now. Like, I got art. I've, I've, I'm dealing with artists who I can't even get to push the release date back on the album because there's nothing buzzing right now. Like, I finished the album. We need to put it out. Like, yeah. Bro, nah, that wouldn't work. Trust it, me, I've been there. I got artists telling me they don't got to post because Kendrick didn't have to post. You know what I mean? So, but you ain't Kendrick. Well, they use <laughs> <laughs> Fuck wrong, niggas. But they have be like that. You know what I mean? They be in their own way. A lot of artists be in their own way. That's what I realized. And there's no they artist. They stand that, in their own way because they I can't agree. see the big picture. You talked about I that agree. last night. Yeah, you did. You know what I mean? Artist stand development. Stand in their way, bro. Right. All, that's what I was about to say. There's no artist development like it used to be anymore. Like, where's the A&Rs? Like, you're like... There's no A&Rs, man. This game is... Like, one performances be trash. They ain't even showing up to <laughs> studios, no we nah, nah, nah. We nah, watched niggas not. perform last night, me, Math, and Chant. We watched niggas perform. We like, yo, Chant was like, where's the artist development? Like, yeah, I'm just looking. I'm like, the yo, fuck? they niggas all stage over the performances stage. is trash. They dope. They, 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 they good artists, you know what I'm saying? But and music it's like, sound yo, y'all all over the place. Like, two of y'all over here on this side of the stage. Two of y'all over there. Two of y'all in the back behind the DJ. Like... Where's where's the, com the 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 combination of creativity on the stage? Because everyone feel they just around, they ain't gotta work. No one wanna show you that they work, and they just saying that they there. So they it's the result. It's the result. Niggas be feeling there. like because you but got a hundred niggas on the stage, talking to them, giving right. them guidance, telling mm -hmm. them, yo, let's do a performance. Right. I used to get DJ LS1 to come before the show, yo, show them how to do this, bro, mm -hmm. and he knew how to do that stage thing. So you, there's certain things that I didn't know how to do, but you know how to call the right person. And you bring them to the table. Right. And right. that's a part of AR too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you can't do it, you're gonna find someone to do it. When you know? do you know you got somebody who you know you can't get through to? Like when do you know I right, that he's not gonna listen to you? This is gonna be a gonna problem. Yeah. Even if it's gonna be a little headache. That's understandable, but right? But they dope as fuck, though. Right, which is- They maybe dope as this fuck. This is the problem. Uh -huh. They're dope as fuck. That's what got them in the door. That's why you fucking with them in the first place, because mm -hmm. they're, they're fire. And mm -hmm. you know it, they know it. The problem is they know it, and they feel like they don't have to work because they're doper than people who are already out. Right. They, they feel like that. Like, I'm nicer than this dude. I'm nice. And if there's one deal for him, there got to be like four deals for me, because I'm way nicer than him. So do you start telling them to do X, Y, Z, A, B, and C? And like he said, they'll, Kendrick don't do that. But the Kanye attitude is what's, is what's going to block their blessings. But, but I, that's what I'm, that's I, what I'm I, asking. I can tell when, you, when I had that, 
I'll tell you a more recent story with Joyner Lucas, right? Mm -mm. Got him signed to Atlantic. Two months after I met him, three months we had a deal. Craig and Dante heard the music, saw the video. I sent them, nice, good deal. Boy wanted to jump in, team is right, rigs the end off. So they like, yo, we're gonna put together a promo tour together. So you're gonna have to go do this. Promo tour, you gotta step around every city. You gotta tap in with every DJ or every mm -hmm. radio station. You gotta sit down and do these interviews. Shake all the hands, kiss all the babies. Yo, after the third, probably the third state, he was like, yo, I don't wanna do this no more. I'm like, bro, this, I seen 50 do this, I done seen everybody. You gotta do this promo, bro. Mm -hmm. This how you gonna meet them. They gonna say they know you, you gonna build a relationship. This is the job. You gonna leave, they gonna spin your racket, bro. Mm -hmm. And he didn't wanna do that. And I'm like, what? but I'm trying to like, yo, bro, you gotta do this. And he just didn't wanna do it. What was it, what reason did he yeah, give? He felt it? like he didn't have to do it. And he had a following already. He had a following, huge following on Facebook, yeah. a lot of social media fans. He was doing his thing and he was building it up. But he thought he made it already. And mm. it was more work to do. This is where you get from where you was at, underground, to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And that radio and them DJs matter. Right. DJs really matter. You tap in with them, go do everybody's interviews. You got to give yourself to get it back, too. Do you feel like some of these artists become big head before the before Absolutely. The That's a fact. Wait, but so my thing is, that I, I understand the example you use, but when you look at Joyner Lucas, he's like, Paul's huge. Yeah. Right now. And he uses, I mean, he screams independence. That's that's what he rolls off of. Yep. But he could he be uses, bigger, though. He could be bigger. I agree. Because he you could don't be hear, on you don't rotation hear on stations. Right. You don't hear none of his That's a whole radio. other part of turning it to the next level. I understand. But in this day and age, when he drops a record with visuals, it mm -hmm. goes viral. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying. But I feel like with a person like him, being that he knew he had a big following already, mm -hmm. he said, yo, I really don't need to do this. I don't need the label. I don't need nobody. Maybe there's somebody in his ear. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You never know. But imagine if those records were on rotation he'd in probably every be, city, He'd have been bigger than state. 50. He'd have been big, bigger than 50 In every right state. Now. That's what we did. Me and Fifth, right. we promo tour every state. Every city, Fifth was on time. Did it. No mm -hmm. problem. No arguing, nothing. Put that work in. Right. You got to do that. You got to shake these hands, kiss these babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to do it. That's the saying. Mm. You know what I no, mean? There's speaking no way around of, um, it. Speaking of 50, how did y'all relate? Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. No, no, let's, yeah, let's go do this chronologically. Yeah, because you just brought them up. Jump me. You see how they jump? <laughs> You're not going there yet, bro. You're not my going man, there yet. You're jumping. crazy. You're jumping. I love y'all niggas, but I'm trying to defend myself, though. You're jumping. Let's go do this. Let's go. Okay, okay. You never have to defend yourself. Okay, okay, okay. Nah, we love you, brother. I love y'all more. But I definitely, I definitely, I'm definitely digging the fact that we're giving some gems to the kids who are listening. I. The hard-headed shit. Yo, you are in your own way more than you know. Stand out the and way. And these things that we're telling you, these things, executives, people who have witnessed it, people who do this for a living all the time, the things they're telling you you need to do, we're not telling you that kind of shit just because. We're not giving you busy work. We're not telling you to do this because we're power tripping and, and making you jump through hoops. Like, this is literally what it is. This is literally the job. And just because they don't show you this part of the job, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Artists don't show you this part of the job because it's not the glamorous part. It's not the sexy part. It's the work. It's the tedious every day, yes, in is. and out, shaking hands with people who might have bad breath, dapping them up, taking <laughs> pictures with them. Like all of that comes with, and and all the greats have had to do this, being on time, being mm -hmm. like, being professional, being cool, not not snapping on people for no reason, not being a diva, big headed, like. All these things happen. The artists that I, I work with, they've been out for years on their own. And I try to tell them, you being dope is why I'm here in the first place. But if you want to go someplace else, you got to do something new. Yeah, You can't a, keep doing the same thing you kept doing. There's a formula to success. And they don't know every part of that formula. So sometimes they got to listen to someone who's going to contribute to that. And it's fluid. It's not yeah. one size fits all. What works yeah. for Gat won't work for Chance right. and vice yeah. versa. Some people, like he said, don't have to be on no... DJs, they could be underground and go viral and still make it. Mm -hmm. But there's ways you could just do everything, cover every ground, so you know you covered it. Right. And you know you just, you, you got it. I got but there's it some it. artists that do pop overnight, though. A lot. It's never overnight. A lot. So, it's they, you just didn't see it. You just didn't see it. It's there's no niggas that do overnight. pop overnight, though, Mac. There's no such thing as overnight. Niggas record a record and they go viral next week. 
That they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't pop. Not to mention the fact that they were at it before that record that they recorded. You just yeah, now caught on to it. It didn't, it didn't, uh, it wasn't know. overnight. It tra- and I think the trajectory today is faster thanks to technology. Right. It's Absolutely it's, it's 100%. Faster, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not negating that. Right. I'm not saying that it takes 10 years anymore. It might take six months. It might mm-hmm. take 10 months. I'm, I, I agree with you on that. Right. But don't ever think that that overnight success you just saw was really overnight. You just, you just caught that. You just caught the tail yeah. end of it. Mm-hmm. He, just came, he just popped. And that's what you saw, but I mean, you didn't see the other you stuff. You didn't catch it, yeah, when they was playing it last so you year. Think, so you think um, Bobby Smurda and them niggas was doing shows before they... He he told us about him writing and doing this and all the stuff he was doing before that record No, I'm saying, off. do you think he was doing shows and he was running the labels and doing certain shit before no. he popped? No, but my, my point is... He did do that one show in Miami with, with Meek and Fab. No, we talking about before he popped. Yeah, that was Bef- before? That was before. So he performed with them before yeah. he popped. That's how I seen him. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, he was in Miami with Fab and me. Before Hot, before, before Hot, yeah, before, before Hot came nigga. out, bro. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. There's, always, There's always some level of work that the artists put in prior to us seeing the actual right. song or hearing it. Right. It's some level of work that they put in, but some. I mean, like again, it's sure, it's uh, it happens so fast now through the technology. And to your point. Going back a little bit about like artist development and all of that stuff, the, the artists now are looking at what's happening right in front of them. Right. right. In contrast to looking at 50 and mm-hmm. their progress or, or um, LL Cool J or whoever. Mm-hmm. They're not looking at that shit. They're like, man, listen, man, I'm going to upload this motherfucker on Bandcamp or <laughs> yeah. whatever fucking that's site. That's a fact. And, and I'm going to shoot this video with my man that's from the projects over there that, mm-hmm. that got a camera. We gonna shoot this content. We gonna come up with a challenge. We gonna send that shit to the world do. star. Yep. We gonna do this. We and gonna this do gonna that. Move. Yep. Yo, yo, bro, that that's we moving all the work down the block. Yo, let me get like. you know, five grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's what's happening now. And you'll be gone in Tomorrow. a year. Yes, yes, yep. you'll, you'll I be, agree. You'll be gone in a year. None of that stuff. because you didn't you didn't build any of the relationships that it takes to maintain. You, no one had no one's invested in you because they never watched your journey. They never watched you you come up. So they're not invested in you at all. And like Gat said, you, it looked to them like you just came out of nowhere, like you popped mm-hmm. overnight. I can't get invested in something that pops overnight. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch this. And when you were on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, you didn't post any of the journey. You didn't show you coming up. Right. We, we didn't take this trip with you. I'm not really a fan. I'm a follower. I just saw you. It is a huge difference between followers and fans. Well, there is an artist that actually showed her journey and that's Scarlett. Yeah. Right. Scarlett was on TikTok for what two years and some change. Right. Shout, shout out to Scarlett. Her Probably fucking to everybody popping. going crazy in the DJ. And you've seen her journey yeah. though. Like mm-hmm. she was she was fucked up. Yeah. She, she was, was broke by DJs, right? Yes. Yes. That's and what like, they lack at too, EPKs. A lot of them don't be having, you know, like documentaries on themselves of how they came up or where they came from. Yeah, that Those, usually comes after the fact. Yeah. That you comes gotta, after you gotta, they you, succeeded. You gotta start from the door, like building a fan base is not jumping up in front of people and, and doing some crazy shit and then they look at you because those those eyes are fickle and they leave, they're quick, they, 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 something else shiny pops up, they over here, like they off you. They got a short attention span. Because mm-hmm. they don't feel like they know you. You right. only, everybody I've ever seen get successful, and my, my man used to say this, you only work with artists that you like on some level, mm-hmm. right? Your favorite artists are artists you feel like you could relate to. You feel like if you saw them in person, y'all would be cool. Like if y'all got a chance to smoke, smoke together, get a drink together, y'all niggas would be cool because you really understand them. You really dig the shit. Shit they saying sounds like shit that you would say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the chance to relate to somebody, if you don't, if you don't know where they're coming from, how do you how do you build that? He's yeah. just noise in the background. Might even be catchy. Might be good. But some of these artists, they they fucking music don't even match their character when you meet them. It's because they, like, they, they just you don't be like, yo, damn, I thought you was tough. You meet these niggas as suckers. Like, you uh, know what I mean? That been going on for years. Too, too long. You be like, even damn, back my nigga, I thought you, you started, was official. Right? Mm-hmm. Your music made me think you was official. You was a sucker. Yeah. Well, he should be writing movies. He's good at he's <laughs> good at acting. He's, he's good, good at writing. Good he's great at writing scripts and scenarios and scenes that make 
that convey that emotion. But, but those yeah. words will make you feel like they're some type of superhero. Yeah, but though, here's the thing, though. When you look at somebody like 50, for example, right? Mm-hmm. 50 knew how to portray different elements, and I'm sure you could attest to this, Shah, elements of different characters in one, right? He had a little DMX in him. He had a little LL in him. He had a little hove in him, like he, uh, uh, Nas, pause, Nas. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He had all these different ele elements in him, and he presented this bigger-than-life character when he would step on stage, when you would hear his records, and then you would hear stories. Right, yo, 50 went over there and robbed somebody. 50 went over there and punched this nigga in the face. So now it's like all this shit makes sense. Like, oh, I'm going to believe him. That nigga's tough. You know the funny part though? True. We, we hear about all the street stories, but we don't hear about him showing up one time and shaking all the DJ's hands. Right, and right. Doing all the spot runs and, and kicking it with and all really these. working, right, putting right. that working. All right, so hold on. All right, so now boom. Join the little track. Yeah, yeah. No, let's, no, no, let's, let's get, get to Lucas. where. So you're at Def Jam. Yes. Yeah, let's move right? up. And what 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 uh proceeds after that? The Cormega record. He, yeah, he Cormega hit on that. starts happening. I'm on Trackmaster Street team. So that's 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 a side thing that I'm doing, and that starts going on. Mm. Next thing I'm in the studio with Havoc. Havoc's like, yo, I me Havoc. He jumps on the hook. Next thing you know, Prodigy as well. I'm starting to be in the mix. Mm. Then Tragedy Gaddafi. You know what I mean? I do like four joints on his album. Right, right. On that album, you know what I mean, he got Man, all the homies from his hood, of course, Capone and Noriega, but then he got some new ones coming. Mm. Even Ja Rule jumped on one of the records, Bing Monsters, that I did. I remember that. You know what I mean? I that record, yeah. So then that was a point where people start calling, like, yo, who did this track? Mm. Blah, blah, blah. So then it starts flowing around. Then Brian Leach hit, you know, hit me. I see him in the studio. We get with Flush. I do um, conflict with him and his whole Wasteland mm -hmm. crew. So I'm just in the mix in Queens, producer for everyone who, who's, who's doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of my, my rise as a producer. So how, how did you transition from actually DJing to production? I know you said you got an SP-12 from your man and it didn't work. Yeah. But how, how was that transition? So the transition was real quick. DJing, I wasn't like, I'm, I'm literally in my hood. You see my cousin's who kid. Mm -hmm. Two blocks down, growing up, it's DJ Clue. Right. From first to eighth grade, it's DJ Envy. So I'm surrounded by all these DJs, and then you go Baby J, a whole bunch of DJs, so they all doing mixtapes. I didn't want to do a mixtape. Mm. So I'm like, yo, I actually wanted to be a rapper. Right. So ain't nobody going to make beats for you me. You got bars? I ain't. I had, no, I, had, got... I, had, I, had <laughs> I had. I had. I had. <laughs> I had, I had bars. I had bars. Right, right. It, it took you, it took you too long to say that. It took you too long to say that. He don't believe that. He ain't going to remember that shit. I can't, bro. Nah, he don't believe I'm that. Nah, I'm fucking with you, bro. Yeah, bro. I was, I was, I was, I, uh, you felt uh, like you was trash? Nah, my boy, shout out to my boy 6'2", who was on shoot for Salt and Pepper. I used to look up to him, and he was from my hood, and he mm. he made it. Like, he was on shoot for Salt, and he torn, and he was like, yo, I like your beats, but you like... Your raps is not that good, bro. <laughs> That's a good the, friend. That's no, a good no, friend. He was the best homie, bro. Yeah. And I'll be honest, bro. I was a mumble rapper, man. I was just, just <laughs> back then, back then, before the South, bro. I was That's a mumble crazy. rapper, bro. Oh, nah. So he was telling stuck me, with yo, it. it just blew up. You know you what I'm saying? Your time. So I'm, I'm a little Haitian dude. So I'm just saying whatever. But he was like, "Yo, your beats, though. Give me some beats." And then mm. I started producing with him, and then everyone. Mm. And that's when I focused on making beats. Mm. And there was no DJ after that. It was nothing. Only time I got back to DJing is when, you know, Fifth ain't had nobody at the show and I had to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the only time. Right, right. Other than that, no mixtape, nothing. Did 50 Cent in the Future as a DJ, but, you know, after that, it was all who kid. Mm -hmm. So really yeah. didn't want to be a DJ. That wasn't my thing. That was what I got me in and got me mm -hmm. passionate about the music. But, but, but DJ, I noticed there's a lot of producers who are major that were DJs before they were producers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like... That's a transition. That taught you. That's a yeah. transition. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Some, you know, go all the way. So I just start stopped at the production. Then I started being around track masters and seeing how they were doing shit. Oh, okay, okay. In that's the studio. It. That's it, right, right. When I seen them, Polk and Tone, you know, Kirk Gowdy and them, the LES, like mm -hmm. the way they were doing shit on a whole, whole nother higher scale. The mixing, engineers. Everything being a hit factory, that was when. And this I is this is why you're working the Queen Circuit. This, this is, is why you. I'm working the Queen Circuit, and then of course you know just trying to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing them in, like you know not being able to be in a session, but like peeping in and like mm -hmm. seeing what they're doing. 
It's crazy. Let you sit in the room. Let me sit in the room. Street team shit. Right. But right. now you can't really sit through this whole session. All right, you got to go, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but just paying those dudes that get me around places and then being around Jam Master J and Randy Allen and Onyx in the session, mm -hmm. those kind of things. And, and you can't really, you learn everything from just sitting around. Okay. Right. Outside of the Core Mega record, which was like your premier record. Like a, your, what would you consider? Or would you consider that your big break? What, what's your that, big break yo, production-wise? That was my big break. Yeah, okay. Angel Dust was my big break in the sense where people was like, oh, you did this? Because it sounded like you would think Havoc did it. Mm. And I was like, nah, it's a new king coming from Queens, bro. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? So that was it. And then tragedy and everything else just started piling up. Mm -hmm. And then um, Rock, Rockefeller had this Keep It Real Wednesdays. And yeah. I somehow got in touch with Clark Kent, and he told me to pull up one Keep It Real Wednesday. And then I got to play beats from all of them in there. We heard about this, show. Mm -hmm. We heard, yeah. Yeah, we did. When they used to bring all the producers yeah, to come go yeah. to baseline. Yeah, Bink said that. Yeah. Yeah. Go in the pool it, table yeah. room. AZ is there, all kind of rappers. Clark Kent, the whole, you know what I mean? All the... And then all of a sudden, I'm playing some beats. And then, Who, what other producers were there when you were there that, that first song? That oh, baseline? man. DJ Paul, I'm um, Paul from Beat Miners. Yep, yep. Um, LES, mm -hmm. Just Blaze. Mm. Um, uh, this is before Kanye. Was uh, Bink, man, Bink was there. Right? Bink was there. Because mm -hmm. Bink told us this story. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Who else was around? That's it. The rest, I don't really like, yeah, that was it. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't too many heads in there, and then, but Clark Kent was given opportunities. Somehow he was tapped in. I played this one beat. I think hip hop heard it, and he was like, "Yo, let me get that." And that became Beanie Siegel's uh, "Tales of Hustler." Hustler, yeah, mm -hmm. on the reason, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Fire, mm -hmm. fire. So that really, and then hip hop's like, "Yo, let me manage you." You know what I mean? So that's yeah. when it really started networking and getting placements in all other places outside of Queens and other artists and shit. You know? Were you always at that time? Was your mindset like? I want to be a part of a label for production in-house, or you just wanted to freelance? I just wanted to freelance. I wanted to be everywhere and anywhere I could be, be fluid. Just, just flowing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get placements everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I just was trying to just, yo, I did this, did that, did that. Even if it was no money, small money, whatever, I was just trying to get these placements up so I could say, I did that. I did that. So you turn around and they all on albums, and then I'm like, I did that. So the relationship with hip hop, was that your first time being managed by somebody? Now, I would say um, the first time being kind of managed was um, with JMJ, Randy Allen. Mm -hmm. He would pick me up, take me around, tell me things, move me around like, yo, mm -hmm. we going to go here. You know what I mean? And then he was the first one that kind of, he wasn't my manager, but gave me that. Advisory. That advisory management thing. Like mm -hmm. him and then his, one of the guys that worked from Donald Francois. And he would kind of be more of the corporate kind of dude. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, you got to do this. You got to do that. But I never had a manager, yo. Until hip hop. And hip hop really didn't manage me. He just wanted a commission on that track. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> that part of the game, right? Did you were you familiar they know with that check coming in? They want a piece, bro. Yeah. That's the game, man. Did you were you familiar with the business side of production? I was like familiar. early on, or what did it come later? Nah, it started coming on a little later. Mm -hmm. But one of my first lessons, um, um, when I sold this track to this rapper from Philly called The Last Emperor. Mm. I remember that, that dude. Remember Last, Last Emperor? Emperor? Yeah. And he was signing the Aftermath. You know, every, you know where everybody is. I know, man. I know, Shit. I know Last Emperor. Right? And he signed the Aftermath. So I'm like, yo, I'm about to get a check that say Aftermath. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is before all of this. Right. So I'm in a I'm in a in a in my lawyer's office and I'm hearing him talk to this other lawyer on the phone. And this other lawyer who's Last Emperor's lawyer is chopping my lawyer up so badly. And my lawyer's like, yo, if you just want this money, man, you just need to sign this. Basically, just told me, agree to everything and sign it. So I looked at this lawyer like, wow. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to get this check. Five grand, aftermath. What's that lawyer name? Theo Sotomayor. Right after that, he became my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I see how he did him. Yeah, I see yeah, how yeah, he yeah, represented yeah. the yeah, fuck that. That's when I was like, nah, I'm going to find that lawyer mm -hmm. and make him mine. Because he, right. was, he was doing the right thing. And he was representing the client. And fighting for them. And mm. some of these lawyers are just like, bro, they work for the system. Right, right. You know what I mean? They all work, they just all get unite. The check. You good. Yeah, just mm -hmm. get the check. You the good. system. Describe the system. that. 
the system, industry. So when you do a deal with a label, who pays the lawyer? The label. label. Mm -hmm. So that's for him to calm down. Don't be too crazy. Mm -hmm. Make this happen. Mm -hmm. That's the system. Mm -hmm. Why you don't pay the lawyer as the artist? Because you want to have all that money to advance yours. You don't want to worry about nothing. So you just caring about the money. Mm. But the system caring about the big picture. Just keep it going like this. Mm -hmm. So we pay the lawyers. We keep them cool. Of course, they're going to fight a little. They're going to know how to ask for more. But at the same time, they're going to work with the system. The, the bigger picture the bigger for picture them. For the industry, for the right. labels. Not mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Not for us. You mm -hmm. see how they look at us. They just want us to rap and do it. And You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So right, they can right. make the money. Right. Wants to tap dance. Yeah. They're still in that true. stage, man. That's why everybody be on their independent shit. Yeah. It, that, that's, that's just another system. Yeah. If I'm being honest, it's just a, You need money to do any of this stuff. And if you don't have it and somebody else is fronting it to you, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to do what's necessary you for that. You got to pay back that nut. Right. Pause. <laughs> yeah. But we got to get back to something physical or something that, that you know, where before we be buying CDs, there's no lives. You know someone is buying this. We just right. talking about that. We talking about that with Paul Wall. Dreams, this, all, the, all the tech guys are making more money than the artists mm -hmm. right. off of what we doing. Mm -hmm. The industry is second to that and they in cahoots because they pay them out. Right. So everyone else is making the money, but we put in the work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the system is bad. Mm -hmm. But anyone you see that has a product or whether it's equipment and Dre with their headphones, they turn into billionaires. Mm -hmm. We got to get back to selling physical products. Niggas be doing billion streams and you don't know how much they get from that. You really nah, not getting man. nothing. It's chopped up the way they want to chop it up. Crazy. It's you know? funny because we had Paul Wall up here and he was, uh, him in tech. Uh, terminology. Terminology, yes. Thank you. Uh, they came up here with, with these. Physical CDs. And vinyl. And, and vinyl. vinyl, yeah, hell yeah. And then when we looked it up on Google, it was like 40-something million vinyls have been sold worldwide yeah. mm -hmm. in like the, the last year. And you getting that money, that real bread, bro. Right. Mm -hmm. And they getting actual something they can hold, not just having their phone. Yeah. And everyone else is making the bread. Yeah, you right. can actually see who produced it. Yeah, that's who, me reading who all the wrote credits. it. That's yeah. how you know I what I mean? Like who all these execs was back in the days. You know what I mean? What studio they Charles recorded Sweet, it at? Charles yeah. Charles Sue. Remember D and D used to be on all them shits. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Or like, Chunk King. King or Chunk King. Yep. The studios, King the engineers. Yeah. Know who you want to mix your joint? Mm -hmm. You can't find that right now. You go on Spotify. You hardly see the producer name. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that the system that you discuss has done, right? They transition from physical copies do the technological advances and they figured out a way how can we pay these artists lesser yep. streaming compared to when we had CDs because when it was CDs you got paid more off of every more, physical copy way more somebody so like, had, somebody, had, dollar now. somebody had to make that CD now if I can circumvent that process I cut my overhead cost down right so now you know what may have taken me just throwing a number out what may have taken me $10 to make now cost me like closer to 20 cents mm -hmm. because now I just got to upload. Yes, sir. It's completely different and I, I just cost, I just saved myself $10, like $10.90. And if we're talking about business over, we're talking about business versus culture, business versus art. Those mm -hmm. are always going to be two different things. The goal of business is to do the best deal possible at all times, yep. right? But it's the best deal possible for me, mm -hmm. not you. Like, you're supposed to do the best deal possible for you. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do the best deal possible. And now those, those may not be the same thing. Mm -hmm. I happen to believe that if you do the best deal possible for an artist, it is the best deal possible overall for a label because your artists are happy, they're content, they're making great money, and they want to stay with you because you treat them right and they don't have to go anywhere. And anybody who offers them something, all they got to say is, I already get that. I already get that. I already got that. I'm already doing that. I'm already cool. I don't. I don't need. Thank you, but well, what will it cost me if I come to you? Oh, see, no, they give me that. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. You know what I mean? I think that's good business. However, I also see the other side where you run into somebody like your Jonah Lucas story, and you got a guy who you spend their money on who's now just saying, I don't want to do this no more. And it's like, well, motherfucker, this is paid for. Like you have to. We have to make the money back. You have to do. I need you to do this yep. so you can go to the next Put level to the working. point where it's profitable for everybody. Mm. And they'll they'll give you their ass to kiss. Like, I don't need this. I don't need you. 
And then they end up where they are, and you wonder. Yeah, that's the machines. That's when you're working with a machine. Got the machine behind you. And you it, it doesn't have to be a machine. It could be a shot money. It could just be one guy who's like, yo, <laughs> this is what it's going to cost. That's, this is what it's going to take. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is the formula. Mm -hmm. and, this, and this guy knows what, what the formula needs to is, happen. Man, and the just, rounds you got to run. Just mm -hmm. because your favorite rapper didn't tell you that this is the thing that worked doesn't mean that this is not the thing that worked. And that's what frustrates. That's why I get frustrated behind it because I see good people with crazy talent who fuck themselves up every chance they get, just being stubborn, just being hard headed, just being lazy, just being entitled, just being arrogant, just being obnoxious. And it, it burns me up because all I can think is if I'd have known that you were like that before I got involved with you, I would have gave this opportunity to somebody else. You just completely mm -hmm. wasted all this time, all this money, all this energy because you got a fucking attitude. Mm -hmm. And I could have gave this to the guy right behind you. Right next to you. You know what I'm saying? The, the, dude, the dude right on your and shoulder. Your focus. And he would have been the guy to take this all away and gave me uh, a 50 cent, a core mega, a track. You know what I'm saying? Somebody legendary with, mm -hmm. with we'd have had that. And because I picked you, yo, champ, you notice how he named a whole bunch of queens, niggas. <laughs> he named a whole bunch of queens. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, I was, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> now, one I Brooklyn to nigga, you heard it. Where's Jordan sure? Lucas from? Yeah. Boston. Boston. Not Boston, Boston, but Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. How'd, you, uh, you, how'd you link with him? Uh, so my boy Life came to my crib for Thanksgiving, and we chilling, and he was like, yo, this joint keep popping up on my Facebook. I what think. year was this? You remind me asking. So. 2015. Okay. Let's let's go through the 50 era then. Let's 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 run it back and get to like that, okay. those big breaks and let's go where so your we, name we, really landed on the map. So yeah. we left off at Cormega, Def Jam, leaving Def, Def Jam, Jam and everything like that. Boom. So um, after I left Def Jam, as I said, I was producer for everyone. I had this one girl from my hood um, named Jane Blaze. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, I remember me too, right? Yeah. Classic. And uh, Steve right. Stout's brother, Scarecrow, who used to manage Clue and Envy and all of them, he was managing her. Mm -hmm. And me being a producer, I, I would produce pretty much her whole project. So I did half, and then Zamba Jive was like, look, we're going to give you this 50 grand for that. I'm 24 years old, mm. and I did damn near half the album, had records with Carl Thomas on it, everything. Mm. She was about to take off, had a deal with Jive. Came back home, showed my mom, was like, yo, it's my biggest check I ever got. And I'm 24, already mm -hmm. had a daughter. She's like, you're going to move out. You know what I mean? You get your <laughs> own crib. So that was the first part of my life where I'm actually getting a real check, seeing it, being able to be proud, show my family that. And they be like, oh, you really serious about this? Mm -hmm. And then get my first crib at 24, and then my career start. From that moment, I'm in the basement. Start putting everything in there, getting Mackie boy, everything I could get, and start producing, and then start calling the artists, come record in my house on an ADAT. This is before Pro Tools, mm. and then that's when I started kind of bringing in everyone, and eventually Fifty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, who was some of the first artists you had coming to the crib to record? Jane Blaze, Saigon, mm. Red Cafe. Oh mm. uh, man, even Juvenile pulled up to my crib, and that's how Juvenile. I met Young Buck. Ju yeah. So Coach PR is an OG in my hood, right? Mm. And he knew CeeLo, who's also like an older head. He's the next generation mm. for me, right? And he was like, yo, kind of shot for him, boom, boom. And CeeLo from the hood, so he the bus driver for, for Juvie. Like so the tour bus? The tour bus. <laughs> Shit. He ended up being Birdman manager. Rest in peace, CeeLo, man. Love that, mm. bro, man. Mm. So he was the one moving them around New York. And Juvie, if you know him, he used that bus like it was a car. I've heard this. He'd go to the deli. He'd go everywhere. <laughs> he ain't hopping in no car, Shout bro. Shout out to Juvenile. That yo. bus went everywhere, bro. Yeah. And for us, we learned later, after eight hours, you're going to pay this, that amount. But CeeLo, was, he was for them. So he was giving them 20 hours driving. Mm. Shit you couldn't even really do, bro. <laughs> but he was like, yo, we, Juvie was in New York. He want to be in the mix. Mm. So he's like, yo, take me there. They went there. Boom. Come out the bus, everyone from New Orleans and Nashville, all from the South. Young Buck is there, Juvie there, and then we meet, and that's where G Unit and UTP start making those Wait, records. So Juvie pulls up in a bus in front of your crib. Yes. With Young Buck, Flip, 
Skip, Skip, all, of all the cats. UTP rappers that Wacko. was from up from back then. And you, if, if Fifty was around at this time, yeah, if it was in my basement. Well, how do you meet Fifty? So I met Fifty in '96 through Jam Master J. Okay. So mm. I'm I'm in Rosedale in Jam Master J basement studio. That's where he had a studio, and they playing a whole bunch of records. Mm. And that's the re when I heard that I, he saw my response. He was like, "You fuck with that?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "All right, wait one second. That's right up the street from Fifth Crib." Mm. So he came back and pulled up, and that's he introduced me to him. And from that moment on, that's when me and homie started connecting. Mm. You mm. know what I mean? So what was that night like, though? To have Juvenile and UTP and... Yo, that 50, night was, like, a, was unit, a lot of like, weed, a lot of, lot of drinks, a lot of heads in my crib, bro. Packed basement, yo. Packed basement. You and ain't just, let nobody upstairs. Everybody had to go. Nah, everybody somewhere. straight down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Baby mom's upstairs. My two kids, nah, yeah. straight downstairs, right, right to the basement. So we get down there and we just cut those records. And they all on, on the mixtapes too. So you connected yeah. Young Buck with 50? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? That was all through CeeLo and, and, and that. How he that was happened. originally a UTP artist. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Cash Money, right? Cash Money Click? UTP was, was after Cash. Was, yes. Right, right. That was Juvie's own, own thing. That was mm -hmm. his crew. Right. Like Young Money, yeah, yeah, that was his shit. It was UTP, yeah, that's, and I that's remember crazy. Ah, oh, that's that is. So, so that now, was that so was now in the I'm 90s. I'm 24. Got my crib, right? Mind you, prior to that, I produced Power to Dollar. I produced uh, Gangsta, the, the for um, Black Hand soundtrack. Mm. I was working with Fifth. I was working with E Money Bags. We in the studio, Chad's studio. We we me and him spent a lot of time. So to the point where when he got shot, I'm at the hospital. Mm. So. The connection started really growing because I'm pulling him around. I'm there calling his grandmother. So as soon as he got better, he ain't trust nobody. So right. he, I'm calling a lot. So that's one of the phone calls he made. It was to me. Mm. He so he trusted me. you. He trusted me. That's what's up. You, he you knew had a, I wasn't on safe those stupid shit. Yeah. So, yeah. so he knew. And then he knew I was about that move. So I'm getting him the DJs. I'm doing shit as a manager before I was doing shit as a producer for him. Mm. I'm connecting him to all the DJs. Why? Yo, being in the game, street team, intern, you meeting DJs. You know that's where it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. This DJ going to play a record. This DJ. So me, that, I should have been in promo because that's, that's what I saw. No, I, I understand why you took him to the... What, I understand that you know what to do. Mm -hmm. My question is, what was it about him that said, this guy? That's the part I'm happy with. Because <laughs> I knew it from day one, from the time I was in Jay's studio, and I heard that voice, and I was like, that's it. What was the record? Oh, uh, man, um, called The Hit, right? Mm -hmm. Mind you, go play another record, Onyx, they're yelling. Lost Boys, they having fun. Animated. Right? Yeah. Sugar, she's a little OG, you know what I mean? Joe Sinister, he's fucking crazy. <laughs> Seriously. So I'm balancing everything. Yeah. I don't want to hear nobody yelling on the record right now. This dude coming in, like you said, with the mixture of Nas and the mixture of Mace and the tone. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, and he from Queens? Wait a second. That's my homie Galinsky. Rest in peace. He used to talk about him. Oh, that's him. Boo. Oh, so everyone in my hood already knew him from Van Buren, mm -hmm. from this, from that, from Jackson. So he had the stories and he had the, oh, yeah, homie's crazy, bro. But when I heard the music, that's all I was like, yo. He pulled up with the, and then we was on from there, bro. Mm. I just knew it, man. That was an early a &R call for me, man. Mm -hmm. I can't say more than that. I just knew he was the one. So you, you, you know, plant your flag. Like, I'm going I'm to I'm push all my chips to the middle of the table. I'm going to bet on this dude. And I'm going to run around with him, do as much as I can. And someone from my hood who was actually in the industry that I used to always try to beg. And, you know, he put me on the street team with Track Masters. It was Steve Stout. And one time I came up to him like, you know, because he, I was trying to get him to buy me a drum machine, everything. Always asking him because he was a kid and play manager. He was mm -hmm. doing his thing. So I was like, oh, bro, do something for me, man. Help me, yo. So he picked up the phone and he called Pope. Mm. And his exact words is, yo, I got this Haitian producer here. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can relate. Why? 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 Exactly. Why can't I you sound, say producer? I sound racist. <laughs> yo, thank you, bro. I never let that part go, got bro. Got this Haitian, yeah, bro. Got this Haitian nigga uh, That part is the part that hurt me to this day. Because I'm like, 
right, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I ain't got bro. to do with anything. Good fuck, bro. <laughs> so, but I'm happy, right? Yeah. Th- so he's like, yo, you got to go by yourself. You're going to drive about an hour, two hours up to Bearsville. Mm. Go see Pope when you get there and play tracks. Mm. So I go, MPV, hit Bearsville up, heart beating, walk in the room, see the window. I don't think I'm going to know anybody. First person I see that I know there is 50. Mm. That's where we do Power that, the Dollar and all that's that. That's where that, um, in, in 50's book he was talking about, it was like a camp almost. It's a camp, bro. Yeah. We were sleeping in houses at night. We right. cabins and all of that, like right. straight beds, bro. Woods, bro. Right, right. So like Wyoming day, before Wyoming. Yeah, well, before Wyoming. But you had Will Smith there, Slick Rick was there, everybody was in there mm. working with track masters at that time. Allure, Nas, Nature, everybody oh, was Kelly. there. Track masters were everybody. Was mm-hmm. Track masters was the ones, bro. Those mm-hmm. are the ones where I'm like, why they not CEOs of labels right now? Like they were the ones. Mm. So, they, so they were opening the doors. You got Gaudi in there, LES, all type of producers they had under their wing. They let me play some joints, fifth her power to dollar, and it was on for me, man. Mm. It was on for me. Let's so he wasn't he wasn't signing nothing like that. So he was signing Jay. Yes. But Jay wasn't moving fast enough. Right. Fifth was trying to figure it out. He met Corey Rooney. Rest in peace, Prince Marky D. Mm-hmm. They sent him to Bezo to work with Trackmasters. Right. That was part of the artist development. Right. right. And he was like, yo, they was like, I have work. And he knew, and he told me this. Mm. Yo, by the time I leave, I'm going to have as much records I could get from them. If they don't give me a deal, these records going to give me a deal. Mm. And every day, until this day, I never seen nobody work like this, two to three songs a day for eight, about a week and a half, two weeks. He came out, probably even a week, came out like 20-something songs. It's the power of the dollar. And it was the whole album that you heard. Right. Damn near. He wasn't playing. And they, as soon as they left, as soon as we came back down, they signed him. He had to pay Jay to get out, and he was good. That's when he signed to Columbia. That's when he signed to Columbia. Right, right, right. That's okay. When let's, put a, let's, put a, let's put a pin in that, yeah, take the take five minutes, minute right. and when we come back, we'll start from there. Yeah, All right, cool. To where we let's do it. Yeah. Five minute break. We up at the camp, we, and yeah. like you said, Fifth saying that all these records is gonna get me a deal. Why? But then, but then he got a deal. He got the Columbia, yeah, deal, got the Columbia so deal, so that we could go from there. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. It. I mean, but why? Why? I really Let's wish. Let's I really wish that JMJ thing had like worked out. That would have been different. Like if Jam Master J would have actually been able to. Do you think? Well, I mean, obviously, he's the end result says he was right to make a move from Jay to, you know what I'm saying, going to get a deal someplace else. But mm-hmm. why do you think why do you think Jay didn't have the the same energy that that Fifth had to get outside? Man, that's a good question. Jay was he was definitely wanting to see him go. Mm-hmm. But at the time the marketing was different, how to break an artist. Mm. You know what I mean? So it wasn't the same. Every few years, marketing and how you break all this, it, it, it adjusts. You know, so I think at that time, Jay was used to the old way, mm-hmm. and Fifth was getting busy and trying to figure out how to really break through the market and be known by all the industry as mm-hmm. well as the whole music lovers in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So at that time, Jay was just like, you know, doing what he was doing, but Fifth was like trying to figure out records like how to rob is going to get this person attention. It's going to get everyone attention. It's going to get the industry. So he thinking of how to market itself to blow. Mm-hmm. And he's just trying to get there. But Jay got a whole bunch of artists on the roster, like I said. So he was just another one. He was the newest one. Mm-hmm. Of course, Jay put him on that Onyx record. Right. React. 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 Yeah. Which was a, big, was a big look for him. That shit was dope. And that's what got us to play, oh, who's that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was the beginning. Jay helped. He contributed. Right, and right. He, he done contributed to all of us where... So many people he done helped in Queens and all over. You know what I mean? And that's one thing about Jay that I, no one can say wrong. Like he Rest in peace, Jam. Rest in peace, yeah, rest in peace, peace Jam. Rest in Jay. You know what I mean? And shout out to Davey D and all of them from Hollis and from Queens, from my hood. Because growing up in my hood, just crossing over Hollis Ave and you see him run DMC in a, in a Benz and mm-hmm. Jay in a Land Cruiser. And you just seeing these idols and you see stretching an MPV. Like, I grew up in a place where everybody was at. Mm. You go to Linden and you go to 190, 180, you see Q-Tip and Fife and mm. you, you go to Farmers, you see LL. So I was surrounded by that shit. Mm-hmm. And that shit in my hood just made me like want to be in the hip hop. Mm. 
Mm. Just going to the park and seeing Curtis Blow. He's sleeping in the park at certain times. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he from not from my hub, but he'd be working with David D. I don't know what he was doing in the park. But I didn't see him in the park, bro. He was outside, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real. Maybe he should have been inside. <laughs> Maybe that's time to go in. Maybe that's time to go inside. For real. But now now we you you're not just like the whole G Unit experience going up and, and catching fifth and him confiding in you what the plan was. Now you're a part of a team team. Now you're not just individual Sean Money XL, the dope producer who did this record, that record, this. but now you're like under an umbrella. Mm -hmm. Was that an intentional move? Did you mean to like really rock with this dude that tough or did the records just keep going and you never stop? So the real the original umbrella was literally just me and him. Hmm. Right? Yeah, yo, yeah, yo and them was the nowhere around when we first started. But when we got in my basement, a few weeks after he was cutting his records, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to bring my homies too. Mm. Now, Yayo come in my crib, the first time he rapped in the basement, I'm like, yo, why he sound like that? Then I go in my booth. He's on the opposite side of the mic. He don't even really know how to rap. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he on the oh, opposite man. side. I never like, heard that before. That's front crazy. Of the filter, bro. Like, he behind. I'm like, bro, why you sound like that? So, like, they used to holding mics mm -hmm. and rapping with, 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 with Shot a DJ that from their hood. Like, they doing mm -hmm. it like this. They not used to going in vocal booths. Mm -hmm. Fifth knew it. You know what I mean? So, Fifth. <laughs> and then that was the first introduction to Yeo. And then Yeo. Was like I'm gonna bring my homie. He brought Banks, and that's how it started. But this was happening way before Yayo and Banks with me and Fifth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. when that happened, then Banks got in that booth. Then it was like, Yo, what the fuck Yo, is this? Who the fuck is this nigga? What's this right now? And he was going in. Mm -hmm. He was younger too. You know what I mean? So he was way younger. So, so at that time, I'm like, Yo, this is gonna be crazy. He was like, Yo, help me, help me get this, and I got you. I was like, let's go, bro. What I want to ask real quick, what was it like the night that you heard that he got shot, 50 Cent? It wasn't night. Did you hear the night, that it night over? It was middle of the day. Right. Listening to High 97, this female host, I'm trying to remember her name. It's a female host. Not Angie. Not Angie, not Sunny. I think she's in Philly now, but she was a female host. Oh, uh, um, oh shit. 97? It yeah. wasn't Wendy Williams. Think no, 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 no. Too. Oh, and I'm thinking of somebody else, because I'm thinking of the brown skin. Uh... It's not T.T. Torres, right? Nope. No, definitely not... before that. Coco? Nope. Oh, I can't remember her name. She's just been out of the game. I haven't seen her in okay. decades. If it's who I think it is. And she was the one that announced it. Now, meanwhile, I'm in my Tahoe at this time. I'm moved like, up from what? the MPV. I moved up to, from the MPV. <laughs> Tao, son in the back seat. One years old. What? I know there's only one hospital you're going to go to if you get shot. Mm -hmm. Jamaica Hospital. I pull up to Jamaica Hospital. I see Kev. I see everybody from, you know, that I knew from his, from his hood. They were all in the hallway just going crazy. Grandma. I'm like, just wow. And I got my son, so I couldn't stay long. Mm -hmm. It was like, nothing, you can't go upstairs. You can't do nothing. So mm -hmm. I was like, wow. So then from that point on, I just went home and listened to the station. And then I just started calling his grandmother like, shortly after until I could get through and then until he could finally call back. And y'all have been rocking for how long up to that point? So we've been like, this is, he got showered, 2001, 2000. 2000, mm -hmm. 2000 so we yeah. was 96. This is four years in. Hmm. Mm. It's four years in. Of you running him through the circuit, kidding. doing powder dollar, doing everything before he made it, running him through the DJs, running around, coming down from Bearsville, getting him to Queens, wherever I could do, I'm there. Mm. And this is lot, like a lot before producing, really. I only right. did like two tracks for him at this time. And his work ethic, you talk about that a lot. Like the Never seen nothing like that, bro. Never seen nothing like that. That's why I'm calling like, yo. So then he finally called back. If he got shot in May, I didn't get a call to September that year. Damn. Mm. His mouth was wide. Right. He had to rehabilitate. What were you doing during that span of time? Producing in the crib, working mm. with everyone, trying to get it on. Just keep it going. Gotcha. You know what I mean? That's when the Beanie record was happening. Trash came mm. out that mm. year. Mm -hmm. Things was moving for me. I was in a good space. Jane Blaze had a deal at, at Jive. 
So I have multiple things running. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to tell him because mm -hmm. he got shot in May. I brought my house in June. So I'm like, yo, bro, I got my crib, bro. I'm out the hood. No one knows where I live. Mm -hmm. Under my crib. And that's how it started. He, he pulled up? He came to... He pulled up. He pulled up in a, in a mini burgundy van. Burgundy minivan with Smurf and all of them. All the soldiers. L, everybody. Mm -hmm. mm. They come out. They see they see the scope. I'm on a dead end. He's like, all right. Come to the basement. We work one night. He filled the vibes. He only went out time one more time to cut a record. And that was fuck you with Clark Kent. After that, everything was done in my crib. Mm. How, how much of the Get Rich or Die Trying movie was de like was depicted as far as your role? See, that was the part that really got me, right? Yeah. Because I'm happy to, 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 to be in that movie, but it, when you look at two characters, I'm the guy in the wheelchair. Well, that was you in the wheelchair. Yeah, because I'm the engineer. Right, right, but right. But we not in wherever they was taking. So it was loosely based. Right, right. Because that's how they had to make it so they didn't have to pay this person or get sued or get had whatever they did. Mm -hmm. It was a loosely based movie. Mm -hmm. So some of it wasn't all the way the way it really was. Mm -hmm. Right. So the guy in the wheelchair was me, but then the guy that get him on the stage, get him here, get him there, that was also me too, but that was also Chris Lighty. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So it was like they had two people playing me, but then also playing Chris at the same time. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's the loosely base of the movie. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. But that's that, good clarity. That, I yeah, never knew that, that. that was me the whole, the whole time. time I, every time I watched the movie, I said, if I ever could speak to Shot Money Excel, <laughs> I would that. ask him this question. Yeah, like, and Chris Lighty pulled up to my crib. He pulled up to the basement too. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So everyone came to my crib. That's mm -hmm. where you met with Fifth. He wouldn't go to your office if he didn't know you because he didn't know. And especially at that time, Chris was managing everybody. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Ja Rule included. Mm. Co managing. You know what I mean? So, so at that time he just mm. wouldn't, he wouldn't move like that. So you had to come to us. Right. So Chris came, and that was that was another beginning of something great. How were you able to maintain all? Because you you're cool with Chris Lighty. You are cool with Chris oh, Gotti. You did something for Chris Gotti, right? I well, I did it for tragedy. For tragedy via Chris Gotti called trying to figure out who did that track. Okay. Right. And okay. that's how I got introduction to okay. him. When when Fifth is dealing with you know life and death. No exaggeration, but you're right in the middle, and you're paint, you're playing, you're you're the front man for everything that's happening. If, if I'm hearing this correct, that's correct. People need to call you to get in contact with yeah, him. He I doesn't was trust the... anybody. He only trusts you. Mm -hmm. His circle super small. Super small. No one else was in there. I was the only middleman between any conversation. He would rehearse conversations with me. Me and him would really build in a space where he didn't trust no one. Mm -hmm. So I had to just really lock in with him. Like, yo, we gonna do it like this, mm -hmm. and I right, cool. And the communication, I just followed that, and that's how we did it. Did you did you know at the time that it would be worth this? There's a lot of danger. There's all these shots flying. And no, I had no fear at that time. I, I really, honestly, just you Haitian, the you don't Haitian, got no fear. Bro, we, I would Here be beating go. niggas up just for being who I am, bro. So I didn't really have that, yo. There was people I would get on the phone with, like, yo, I'm gonna get some approval from some heads from Southside before. What? It wasn't y'all on like, different what? sides like, too. What do you mean? Uh -oh. Like. There's people that were in fear of everyone, Supreme Team and all of that. Mm -hmm. I, bro, there's so many gangsters from my neighborhood, OGs, the stories. If you live in fear of the story, you ain't even meet the person, but you living in fear of the story, mm -hmm. I wasn't one of those. Right. I mm -hmm. couldn't do that. But there would be people in my hood that just heard the story and be scared of that person mm -hmm. based on the story. I'm like, nah. And this mm -hmm. was the homie and I knew he was a real one. Fifth was not, never playing. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like he was some weak, soft nigga. Mm -hmm. I knew he was about it too. So mm -hmm. it was like, yo, but this nigga is the truth. So that was the only focus for me. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the future moving forward. That's it. I wasn't in fear of none. I even got a call one time like, what y'all doing? Da, da, da. And I knew, you can't say, yo, I'm at my crib. You can't tell this person that. You had to keep everything a certain way. Right. So no one really knew what we was doing. It was like an army. It was exactly like an army. It was like an very army. militant. Yeah. And we moved very right. I haven't seen nothing like it since. And you got kids in the house, so you yeah. definitely two can't kids up. Yep. Be kid, and gotta keep my crib safe. Because if anything happens, it's happening upstairs first. Mm -hmm. We in the basement. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep my family safe. So this is quietly what I'm hearing. There's a lot of it's almost like an executive boot camp on like how to deal with this. I mean, it's the worst case scenario and it's the harshest conditions. One wrong move would have ended everything. Mm -hmm. 
And I even felt that even up to doing shows. Like, yo, someone could book us and just wipe us out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this, this is something that kept going on even after he made it. Because mm-hmm. you never felt like it was over. So you just had to move a certain way. And we moved militant. And he started buying the bulletproofs and all of that. So mm-hmm. things started getting right. And we had security. So we moved right. Who supported you while this has happened? Like they always say, like <laughs> you supported like, him. Check in on your strong friend. Like who? yeah, I had homies like you know from my hood, six two, Coach PR, Casper. I had like, you know what I mean. My cousin Hooker was around, so we had certain people, and then the hood homies. But they were also mad because he was from Southside, we was from Northside. Mm-hmm. So certain people you really couldn't. I really was not. It wasn't too deep with that because it was a. Two different sides of Queens. Right, right. You know what right. I mean? Mm. But then later on, that's when I started bringing my other homies around. Ace, Slow from Slow Bus. All of them started coming around after that. Mm-hmm. Bringing the little homies around so they could be around. Mm-hmm. And that's when it just kept going. And North Side and South Side started blending in. So so you, so you, now, you know, 50 comes to your crib. Y'all start recording music. Banks pulls up. Yayo pulls up. And y'all creating these like masterpieces of records. What was the mindset of how these this music is gonna be distributed? Like original records that you make compared to records that's out that 50 just freestyles on and, and makes a hit, makes it better than the shit that's on the radio. Yeah. Like, what was the mindset between you and 50 and the strategy? Right? Like, okay, let's do the song that's popular on the radio. You freestyle over it, body it. Let's put that out to the streets in comparison to this is original Shaw Money XL production record. That's a good question. So I used to have this indie called Shadyville Entertainment. Yes. Yep. Right? So P Dap was on it, nights and round tables, I press vinyls, whatever. So I met this guy named Bob Perry, who mm-hmm. owned Landspeed. Independent label. Independent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he would do the vinyl, he would do everything. So I met him doing that with all my indie stuff. And then when I saw Fifth and we was doing what we was doing, I was like, yo, this power the dollar needs to be heard, bro. Mm. And then these new records like 50 Bars and, you know what I mean, Follow Me Gangsta and all this other stuff that I was doing, I was like, bro, let's just put it out on something on the underground. Let mm. them get that out. And he was like, he was with it. And that was the beginning of the start from Guess Who's Back to 50 Cent is the Future, which is like two months apart. Okay, I get that. So, so it was your idea to say, yo, body these tracks of songs that's popular on the radio. No, no, no. That was him. That was him. That was him. He okay. said, yo, give me this instrumental. It was, he was like, give me the instrumental, but he'll be like, yo, give me that LL record. That was all him having yeah, those yeah, ideas. Yeah. If you smile for me, give me that. Give yeah, me yeah. all of those records. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I'm like, yo, bro, the vocal's still on it. He was like, I don't care. Bro, <laughs> then I was trying to get the instrumental, chop up the part with the hook. That's mm-hmm. when I started learning things on Pro Tools because I never was taught to be an engineer. Right. He's literally like the one of the second, third people I ever recorded as an engineer. Mm-hmm. So you're learning on the job. I'm that. learning on the job. You learn it on the job to be an executive. You learn it on the job to be a manager. <laughs> no, you're no, a, no, pro, a me, promoter, engineer, yo, advertiser, marketer. Let's like, say this. Christ. This is the part we learn. We ain't got no money to pay nobody. Mm. Mm. So who you gonna pay the engineer? You ain't got no money. Mm. You gotta learn this shit. He, he couldn't even he couldn't even feed his homies at the time, bro. Mm. So we had to really come together and do this together. And it, I turned into an engineer. I, my main goal was to be a producer. Right. That's why after that, I never really engineered again. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's not what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Some of the some of the stories we hear coming. He wasn't the only person recording in that basement, though, right? Or was he? Nah. Like I said, Red Cafe, Saigon, Cut a Record. You know what I mean? Dap a few other young. How was he cool with other people pulling up? No, he wouldn't be there. These are days that he's never there. Okay. When he's there, there's nobody else there. Mm. Got you. Saigon, there's probably one time Saigon was there. Saigon told me he got in the um the smoke with 50. Yeah, in the in the basement. Because he they stay connected. Then he was texting him and all of that. And then you know, Fifth, he ain't really so her fifth balked on him. On the <laughs> <laughs> it was cool in the beginning. Yeah, he said that. <laughs> oh shit. It, it was, was cool in the beginning. But then Saigon just kept going. So and Fifth had his whole vision. And it mm-hmm. was the gorilla unit. Turn mm. into G unit, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm. What was your biggest hit that came out of the basement? Um, biggest hit out the basement, Poor Little Rich. Mm. As far as me producing, yeah. Of course, I recorded everything else. What up, Gangster? The first record I recorded on Pro Tools. Many men, all of those records recorded there. Those were on Eight That. Right. You know, what I mean, half the album was recorded before we even signed to to, to Aftermath, Shady Aftermath. So what was that? Mm. What was that moment like when you found out that 
Eminem yeah, was tell us that coming story. around. And so now, that was an ill call, right? What you was got, y'all doing at the, mo- at the we moment? We in the crib recording, mm-hmm. right? I get this call from my lawyer, Theo. Right. And of course, at this time, it's 50's lawyer as well. And he's like, yo, Eminem is really playing this mixtape nonstop. Mm. Right? Mm. Now, if you know Eminem's history, his security guards, you got Box, they got Craig, they got House, they all from 40P, they all from Queens. So they already know what's going on in Queens. Mm-hmm. And if you're from Queens, you know Fifth is the next one at this time, if you really tapped in. Right. So they play. Or if you're not that tapped in, guess, like. Yeah, but they playing Guess Who's Back and they playing 50 Cent of the Future, Future when they driving them around. All of a sudden, he here. He already met Fifth mm. in the 90s. So, you met 50 in the 90s? Yeah, you go back, you mm. see a pick with Fifth, Punch. Uh, Punchline, Wordsworth, Wordsworth, yeah, Wordsworth. Wordsworth. Yeah, Lyricist Lounge days. Lyricist yeah, Lounge yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back Fifth, when Fifth was outside. He would try yeah. to be in the mix. And, mm. and, and it was with the outsiders from out of Jersey. He was, outsiders. He was, exactly. He was in New York all the time. Mm. Exactly. Gotcha. Rod Digger, boyfriend Point Pace of One. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, at that time. Young Z. Mm. So he was in that mix. And so he heard, he knew Fifth, but this is the new Fifth. This is the after he got shot. Mm. The records was just different, bro. Mm. Just crazy. He was going crazy, and M loved it. So he called Theo. And Theo called the crib. I looked at Fifth. Fifth said, "Book the flight." So that how did he get? How did he even get to Eminem's ears? Through he the, just told the mix tape. Oh, through the through the through, through the, the driver. Mix tape. The, the driver. Okay, okay. Security I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I got the you. Security got you. guards. They were right. playing that shit nonstop in the car. Mm. Mm. And then he got onto it, and then he kept going nonstop. And that's when he realized this is something he wanted to do. So which book he the was flight. Smart of. Yeah. And M was the one. And he was like, yo, we're going to do this with Dre. So M made that whole call and told us to come to LA. They doing the eight mile soundtrack as we go. Yeah. That's how Wingster ended up on that soundtrack. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So we go in the studio and it's like a big film screen and it's Dre, Jimmy, Paul Rosenberg, M, and it's me, 50, and Theo in there. Mm. <laughs> and that meeting was a game changer. Mm. Mm. It was the way that you guys expected it to go? Exactly the way. Even better. Mm. This, you know, I ain't never, this is Dr. Dre, bro. This is <laughs> like, the hell. You know what I'm saying? So we right. going to meet them. You thinking like, yo, this is, these are legends. These are mm. the ones. So we got in there. We, Fifth was already ready. Fifth knew how to handle meetings. He was ready. Mm. So he got in there. He did it. He sold it. They, they was all in. The mm. next thing you know, in the club. Next thing you know, we come back to Cali. In the club, all those records with Dre, go to Detroit, cut them records with Dre, cut them with M, M start mixing them, M telling me, yo, bring the sessions. Yo, I bring Poor Little Rich, bring many men. He start adding on to it, mm-hmm. start really bringing that. Like, he really showed me some shit. Eminem did. Eminem did. Was you there for the In The Club video shoot? Yeah, I was there. Shug pulled up? No, that's a good story right there, man. <laughs> I was not only there, I was outside. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people was outside when Shook pulled up. Everybody, security and all, doors closed when Shook pulled up. God damn. Nobody, everybody, I got, I'm going to be honest, they were scared as fuck, bro. <laughs> so me and my homies, like, this is fifth. This is our food. We about to eat, bro. Right. Fuck that. Right. Mm-hmm. So me, my boy Gio Smurf, uh, my boy uh, Marcus, a whole bunch of homies from the hood, bro. We went outside and just let them know. We not scared, bro. Mm-hmm. And he just was there staring at us, looking at us. You know what I mean? And then we was there, bro. But his issue wasn't with y'all. No, nah, it was with Dre. But right. he was trying to scare everybody off, which mm-hmm. worked for everyone that stayed in the building. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but then he seen some real hey, niggas that's coming Come outside. On, like, it's like, crazy. Not it's crazy. Scared, bro. I'm not, not laughing because it's funny. No, it's no, like... but that's real. No, every yeah, every rapper was inside, everybody. Dre, everybody stayed inside. Mm. It was the homies, me and the homies. I was the only one in this industry that was outside. Mm. Everybody else from the hood that was outside. I heard him was outside. No, heard, he wasn't. Well, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. Tony told the story different? He wasn't outside. Yale wasn't outside either. Oh, mm. well, so okay. We was outside. You know what I mean? We was protecting what we was there to protect. Mm. And we let Shook know. And he had a whole bunch of, and they, nothing they could do, bro. Right. Mm. That you know mm. what? Mm. Thank God it didn't go left. Right. Exactly. Thank God. I'd rather yeah. that because they could have just right. started shooting or whatever. Yeah. But we was out there letting them know. Either way, we was not. We was ready, well, bro. Well, you got to think about it too. Like 
Suge is not used to people saying no. Like, yeah, I'm not scared not. of you. Yeah, yeah. Not so when you got that. people that stand up again, like, nigga, nah, we're not doing that. To, not, not here, not today. Nah, right? I mean, it's even, not happening. Even after that, Suge will call my call with my phone and just make certain calls to see how you respond. And if you responded wrong, then he know what to do. Right. He wanted to but touch you, te- check your temperature. Wrong, bro. Mm-hmm. It's all about how you respond to these dudes mm-hmm. with these calls, bro. Give me a response. Right. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the response? Or is that the answer? Nah, he giving nah, me a response? They gonna have to go through it because this is this <laughs> right, right. The time you gotta be on. If you know, you know. If you know, right. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't teaching them that one. <laughs> 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 so the album comes out, and. You're off to the races. It's going nuts. Eminem co-signs it. 50 is all over the place. And those old beefs start to resurface. Like the how to rob little frictions. They're not beefs anymore, but now here comes more shit. Mm-hmm. And you on the front line. But now you're you're an officially like an executive now. Mm-hmm. Like what was that transition like? Yeah, what was your role? Because you, from producer to, to what? So it went from producer... Executive, management. executive producer and manager. You sound okay. co manager, right? Mm-hmm. So Chris Lighty became the main manager, and then I was the co manager. So I'm with him every day. Mm-hmm. I'm on the road. I'm with him every day. So I started meeting everyone and having all the connections. For me, it just became me learning how to really excel in this business. I was already in the loop with everyone, so right, for me right. it was easy. Mm-hmm. And he knew I knew how to communicate mm-hmm. clearly. You know what I'm saying? Without right. no problems. You know what I mean? So we just knocked it out. It was a success run. And then after that, we hired everyone we needed from security, everything we needed. The squad was right, built right, drivers, everything was tight, mm-hmm. solid. There was not no little hole in the wall, bro. Mm. And we moved right from that point on. And didn't look back, didn't cut a corner, didn't c- try to save no money or nothing. We did it all right. Mm. You know what I mean? And he mm. moved right. We get into the shows, everything. He ain't a bulletproof. Now, mind you, we the front line. I'm not in the bulletproof. Hmm. So it, anything can happen to it, you. It's going to happen to us. You know what I mean? Right. But we had to sacrifice that. Right, mm. risk it. The risk. And Thankfully. it's never been a situation where like you've nah, gotten out and it's like, oh shit. This is the first time I realized, and my boy Free will tell you this, like, no more limos, bro. No more limos. Cause we went to Ohio, Ohio, same place where T.I. Homie got shot. We yeah. went to the same club, bro. They don't play out there, Cincinnati. Mm. You leave that club, they following you, bro. Mm. We in a limo, these niggas shoot up the limo, bro. Now we all in a limo ducking. What? This was like, oh, after this, no limo. So you can't really be seen like, oh, that's them. Was the limo mm-hmm. bulletproof? Hell nah, no, that's bro. Right. Damn. Hell <laughs> no, no limos. That's crazy. Hell no, no limos. No. <laughs> but after that, that's when it was like, we going to move like this. We going to move like that. No limos and none of that. We going to get in the vans and the truck. trucks and all that and start moving differently. But yeah, nah, that shit, shit got real. Mm-hmm. Certain cities is crazy. Yeah, no, I'll be no. I, I I came home from jail in 2021 May. I met Fifth for the first time in like November, right? Uh, through one of my men's. Um, shout out to um Trigger Op. Um, and we met up at a, a Foxwoods Casino, mm. right? So he was like, "Yo, champ, pull up!" Boom, boom, boom. So I pulled up, and I'm like, "Yo, where this nigga at?" Like. I, as far as what you're saying, I'm like, yo, this nigga didn't pull up the regular way a nigga pull up. Nah. This nigga was somewhere else, bro. He was somewhere else, and I didn't see him until he got to the fucking stage, bro. Yeah, very calculative. Man. Yeah, I was like, oh, shit, where the fuck this, this nigga just like came that. out of nowhere, bro? Yeah. But I, I understand what you're saying. And that's happened multiple times. I've been around him on different occasions yeah. in the city it or whatever. It ain't that easy, bro. And it, you're not just going to get next to fifth no, like that. not like that. It, it doesn't sound like fun. Nah. It sounds like a lot of work, a lot of stress, <laughs> a, lot of a lot of anxiety, yeah. a lot of pressure. Yeah, talk like, to God before you go out with that. It's going to be a show it, this oh, week. <laughs> thank God for weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> you smoke your way through that, baby. Yeah. Like, hey, man, it, almost, it, bro. it almost is this part to this that doesn't, Yo, it almost doesn't feel worth it. Yo, whatever you're ready to live for, you got to be ready to die for, man. That's, That's where fact. that title came from. Get That's rich or die trying. Facts. We was going to do it all, bro. And that's that's how he got it. There was no exceptions, bro. Mm-hmm. Did you ever did you ever look at it like in contemplation, or retrospectively, or in the moment? Like, this man survived this situation. 
and he's excelling in his career and I'm a part of this journey. This is meant to be. I don't I'm I'm not even like I know you don't have any you didn't have any fear. Mm -hmm. But did you say to yourself like this is meant to happen, man? I'm all that shit y'all talking about over there. Y'all going to do this, y'all going to do that. I don't care about none of that. This niggas done survived this shit already. Mm -hmm. So this is going to happen this way and I know it and I believe it and that's that. That's complete vision, bro. And that's how I felt the whole time. And then when we got with Chris, then we started seeing even more professional levels. Mm -hmm. And then everything else started getting more like, yo, this is solid. And I knew we going to move right. And he started getting that bread. So them bulletproofs like 200 each. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I knew he was safe. Mm -hmm. And that's all that mattered to me. Right. You know what right. I mean? Because hey, I'm not famous. It's before social media. So no one know. It's me and Mike Lighty coming to pick up the, the back end or whatever to collect the money before he hit the stage. Mm -hmm. After that, you're dealing with some real securities that we had. We had yeah. the illest securities to this day. Mm -hmm. Some of Drake's security, Chris Brown's security, they all work for us mm -hmm. right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they were all for us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they were the realest, man. We had the solid team, bro. So the first time comes out, goes nuts. Y'all are running all over the place. What was your focus as far as your career was concerned? So now this is where I stopped being as much as a producer because on the road, I'm busy handling stuff. Coordinating, road managing. So after a while, like it's like, damn, man, I can't make a beat. Like We ain't sitting still for nothing. Mm. You know what I mean? So you know, then I started realizing, yo, you can rent a bus with a studio in it. <laughs> yep. So the first bus I rented was the one that Juvenile pulled up to my crib with. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. He had a booth in it. <laughs> oh my he god. He had a booth in it, everything. They take the generator out when they get to the hotel, connect it to something so you don't hear the, the vibration when mm -hmm. you're recording. Mm. And that was it. And when every we got to the city, we would not only just do the show, we recording every record G unit album, everything. So we were nonstop workers. That's one thing I give fifth. We work, bro. Mm -hmm. We put that work in. So every minute was counted for. When did when did that run end? The end. So started in 02, ended in 07 for me. That's a During the, Cur the Curtis run. album? Right, right before Curtis. Mm -hmm. Right after Banks dropped his album and then Buck the World came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like probably a month. Around that time, Buck the World album came out. That's when it ended for me. Why is that? I mean, Fifth came to the decision where he just was done. He felt like he had it on his own. He wanted to do it. Okay. And he made a call. Mm. You know well, what as mean? far as like making records on his own or just? No, running the company, president. I was the head of the company, you know, managing banks, Yale Buck, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he was like, yo, he wanted to cut the ties. And that's when he made a cut. He made a call. So are y'all still cool? Yeah, we ain't got beef. We just parted ways. Right. It yeah, wasn't a beef. It wasn't yeah. an actual issue. Right. It just fifth had fifth fifth just be flipping. That, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's that's just I can't say it more than that. He trip out. So <laughs> at this point, it was my turn. Most people would ask like most people would expect there's a story behind it where you did something in order to deserve getting getting scissored. If you ask him, he'd say I was making too much money, man. That's my boy, though, right? Too was much you? Huh? Was you? There's no There's such thing such as making thing as too, much too much money. money. That's yeah. a fact. There's no yeah. such thing as no such thing. That's where they do that at. Like, so, but mm -hmm. this is one of those parts of my life where I learned, like, damn, bro, you watching what I'm making? He's making 10 times more than me. Mm -hmm. But he still care about that. I'm driving Ferraris. I'm doing too much. I'm shining. Mm -hmm. And he, 48 laws of power. Never outshine the master. Mm -hmm. And that's when I learned that. Lord number one. You know what I mean? That's unfortunate. Yeah. So that's when it started becoming a little crazy. And then, you know, but me, it was no beef, like I said. So we just had to part ways. I said, all right, cool. Still helped out Buck. Came back, did Beamer, Benz, and Bentley for with Banks. Mm -hmm. Kept helping Banks. And then Banks, you know, he was kind of, he was worried because Fifth was in trip. He was tripping. So then Banks kind of like, I can't, can't shot. They had to choose sides. Mm -hmm. So once you choose sides, I was like, all right, bro, y'all got it, man. And then just... Do you feel I like he on. lost trust for you? Nah, I just felt like he wanted 100% of what he had. He wanted to control it. Mm. You know what I mean? So before, you know, I was running the show. I was the one managing. I was president of the company. I was running the show. Mm. I was making the moves, hiring the people. I put the promos team there. I put everybody there. Mm. You know what I mean? So he wanted 100% of it. Mm. He wanted to run the show. I mean, I, I'm not in, I'm not, 
in his business. I don't know what the papers looked like at the time and like maybe what what may have spurned that decision or caused that decision to happen. So one thing I do know, there was some girls that worked at the label. They it's always a woman. Yeah. <laughs> no, kidding, they had this plan. It was called She Unit. <laughs> you serious right? or you joking? I'm dead ass, man. Y'all can laugh. <laughs> oh my God. It was God. called She Unit, man. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all why is everybody next? Like she net, yo. Oh, it's called wow. she, bro. Everybody is different. Bro, last different. Uh, yo, y'all ask me a question. I'm yeah, not holding yeah. nothing back. Definitely. I, I, I told you I got love for son, bro. Right. But he was listening to them, and they were like, "Yo, we got this. Child doing too much. Let's, let's, we got this." So he started listening, and I'm like, "Yo, all right." And that's when it started going crazy, bro. I seen the marketing plan, and it was like they had a plan to run this shit, and. 100% of nothing after that. Not another album came out, nothing else came out. Nothing mm. after I left. You know what's funny from a, from from looking from a bird's eye view, right? I, I, there was a time um, during the early 2000s where it was like, you know, he had signed M.O.P. He signed Mob, Mob Deep, Deep. Mace. The Games. Yeah, I did all yeah, The Games was earlier. But Mob, right. that was a good one with Mob. I was really right. happy to work with Prodigy and Half. But then I looked- Again. Mm-hmm. Again, full, yeah, yeah, again, full, full circle. circle. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's official. Yep. But then I was looking and I was like, in my mind, I was in prison at the time. So I'm reading all the magazines, I'm looking at the movie, I'm just super into the unit. And I'm like, why is this important? Why is them being on a label so important right now? Right? Yeah. And what is it going to do for their careers later? Because I seen MOP and shout out to Fame and Dance um, go from Rockefeller mm-hmm. to G Unit. Right, and I was like, nah, this nigga's playing that 48 Law shit. That's what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, honestly, I was reading I didn't that book at either. that time. At the first, I was like, why is he doing this? Like, they already established blah, blah, blah. But he had a plan, and we just had to follow it. And we was good. The MOP records was crazy. The mm-hmm. Mob Deep actually came out. That was completed. Right. And then he was doing stuff like Olivia, and I'm like, uh, I don't get it, right? Mm-hmm. And he was just had a vision. And then I'm trying to do get some new, new dudes that you never heard of, and some unsigned that you, and we, Found this kid in Arizona named Hot Rod, fifth, him, fifth yeah. her dad, him. and he loved it. Mm-hmm. So he ended up taking over and was like, yo, I'm gonna do this. And then I was like, yo, let's get some more. But he just wanted to focus on the ones he, I guess, that were already established. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like a lot of conflict came in when he was bringing a lot of artists on? No, nah, it was no conflict with that, because I put him in a place I did for Mob Deep, the, the single off the album. Crazy record. You know what I mean? One of the Crazy. biggest yeah. ones off that album. What was so, the name of that joint? 300 Deep? No. With, with All of the Morning? What? Was Mob Deep on the record? Mm-hmm. Mop on the record was one record. I think it was called Three Hundred Balls, Three Hundred Deep, or some shit like that. Oh, that was a that wasn't on no album though. That was a yeah. freestyle. Freestyle, yeah. Okay, that okay. shit was hard. Yeah, I'm put them in their places. That yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that was my shit. Yep, yep. Right. And then there was a time where we were sitting in a meeting, and Jimmy was like, "Yo, who did this track?" Mm. And this was my time where I was really about to be happy. Like, yo, I did it. What track? Put them in, in your place. Put them in your place. All right. Fifth said, Havoc did it. Oh. I said, Oh. Yo. Oh. That's, that stung <laughs> me just now. God damn. Did he did that, do it out of spite or he... he? Yo, bro, he got his own ways, oh. man. So he got to control the show, bro. And he didn't want Jimmy to look at me like I was like the one making the real things happen. So he had to give it to Havoc because Havoc is Havoc. Right, right. So he was like, yo, Havoc did it. I'm like looking at him in the meeting like... This thing is crazy, bro. You didn't, you didn't correct him? <laughs> nah. I fell in line, bro. Because it's like, yo, if we do that in that meeting, it's not going to look good. Well, you definitely can't. Not you know what I'm saying? Okay, but a, yeah. a conversation mm-hmm. after the fact? Like, yo, bro, why would you tell him yeah, that? Yeah, nah, we definitely had a convo after, bro. But that was the beginning of the end. Mm. That was the beginning of the end. So I'm just seeing his moves, and I'm like, bro, I'm with you, bro. And it was like, yo, he just kind of had his own vision. You so keep saying that, but I'm, I'm that. trying to figure out what that vision is when it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't the understand. The vision is what you see right now. It's not a label. Mm-hmm. It's just nothing else happened. You know what I mean? I was the one that actually get these artists to deliver the albums. Like we get in the studio, make these records, mix these records, deliver the album. Mm-hmm. I know how to deliver. You take me out the equation, ain't no deliveries, man. What mm-hmm. happened to the she unit? <laughs> That's a good question. It never happened. Never happened, man. Never happened. Because this is the first time I'm hearing that. I never yeah. heard of something. I never heard of she unit. Yeah. Nah, new, one on, new one on a historical. Female group? 
the whole female no, group? no female group, no female rapper. It was just female like behind the scenes. Wait, but then, oh. dude, but um, back when y'all was doing the mixtapes, y'all had uh, what's that girl, Scarlet? Yeah, Scarlet. Yep, she was from supposed up to here. be signed to the yeah, 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 yeah. She was on it. Yeah. And then she just kind of went left, and then he just oh, kept okay. moving. Okay, but she, okay. he was writing her song. She wasn't really a rapper. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. So gotcha, he, gotcha. she was pretty and all that, and then she had a lot going on. So he kind of just let her, let her go. But she definitely was ready. Olivia. What about In a space um, where she wanted to be on? What about Brooklyn? Brooklyn was the homie, but she was signed to Drake. Right. When we put on the record. That was my homie, Brooklyn. Right. But she was signed to Drake, so it wasn't like she was on us. I thought she was G Unit. Nah. Olivia came out though. Not an album. No, I mean, you put so the video out. Features. You had the single. Just a feature, Best Friend, and another record. Did probably she, a single. Yeah, yeah, the single. She had a single, but yeah. yeah with yeah. the video shot and all that, like. Yep. But when you think of Gina, do you think of an R&B singer? No. Exactly. So then it mm -hmm. just didn't make sense. It wasn't marketed, right? It wasn't marketed. It wasn't, it wasn't time for that. I felt like at that point, you guys could have expanded into anything you wanted to, though. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. R&B wouldn't, wouldn't have been so left if you decided to. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing he's saying. He said 50 had his own vision. And that, yeah. whatever that vision was, it's what we see now. So I could bring him an artist it. that I told him, like, yo, this time we need to sign this. If it wasn't a part of his vision, he gonna tell me straight up, nah. No reason, no explanation, just nah. Just nah, bro. And when you step to him about not giving you credit for the mob deep record and say, yo, why did you do that? No. Nope. It's because Havoc is the big producer and he needs to be seen as that. Mm. I mean, he would he would have been that anyway, though. Yeah, but he had a vision that I didn't understand, but that's what he saw. Mm. But and at the cost of you. At the cost of me. But I had to sacrifice since we started, so I guess he got used to that. What were some of the other ones? Well, other what? Sacrifices. Come on, bro. <laughs> his name the whole shitload. He's <laughs> sitting over here all day. The whole shitload. His crib, yo, his safety, I mean, yo, his come kids. Come on, bro. We putting lives on the line. For I'm him, talking bro. about. I'm talking about in a professional man. Sac I'm not talking about. Oh. I'm not talking about as far as like standing next to a guy who's being shot at. I'm talking about as far as your. Career. All right. So, being an executive working for a label, do you get a contract? Yeah. I didn't have one. Huh. Right. Hmm. So. You see someone else come in, she's a white lady, she gets the contract. Hmm. So you be like, damn, homie. So she gets that, but I don't. Mm. I've been here before all of them. Right. So I, you see the, 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 the fact that things is going left, and then you just, I'm young, bro. I'm 26, made my first meal. I'm not about to end that. Mm -hmm. So I, I oh, ride okay. out, bro. You mm -hmm. got to ride it out. Sometimes you can't stand in your own way, like I said, a rapper would. I know how to chill. Mm -hmm. So I, I dealt with some of the shit he dealt with, but not a lot of people would have. They would have flipped out. But guess what? They would be broke right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Bro. Right? They'll be fucked up right now, telling a whole nother story. <laughs> I'm chilling. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, all right, son. All right, cool. You got it. Can you be mad from the opportunity he gave you? He gave you an opportunity. He didn't give me an opportunity. I called his phone. I I'm called talking, him when he got shot. When he got shot, right? And he, he could talk again, he called He called you. my house. Right. Under my house. Mm-hmm. Recorded my house. Everything was done by me for free without it being something he gave me. I gave it to him. Right. So what did he give me? He was a rapper that I believed in. Mm -hmm. There's a million rappers I worked with that still didn't make it. Mm -hmm. Not a million, but a lot of rappers did you come, mm -hmm. they ain't making it. But when he made it, he brought you with him. Brought me with him, or I was the one that was built to be with him because I was the one moving mm -hmm. the motion. I'm saying he could have been. Bringing, bringing Chris Lighty to the table to right. bringing. Theo to the table. Right. These are chess places that made the right moves. Right. This is people that I said that need to be in the, in the team. Right. There's not people he brought to the table. Right. So he, I added you value. Those calls. I added yeah, it was, value. Right. It was your foundation. I added value mm -hmm. to the foundation right. of what built us. Right. These are not people that he said, "Yo, I'm gonna go get Chris Lighty." I said, "Yo, let me. Chris Lighty's the one." So why not do paperwork? I wanted paperwork, but the homie didn't want to do it. Mm. So that's where we started going left. Mm. When you brought it up. Yo, he's like, oh, shit, I did this on my own, bro. What you fucking the whole time? <laughs> but, you know, this money changes people, bro. So I had to get used to that. Money reveals people. I see people. niggas walk in my house broke, walk out rich. Mm. I'm still the same nigga when they walk in and when they walk out. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing, none of that money ain't changing me. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, in, in, through this whole journey with him, did you ever put yourself in his shoes? And try to play. I put how myself he was in his shoes several times. That's why I had 
the, the, the calmness in me, like to just accept certain shit. He really been around people he couldn't trust. Like he from the hood, talking to some, he had some issues. Mm. I understood that. I knew where he came from growing up. So I put myself in his shoes half the time. But after a while, it's like, yo, sh come on, bro. If you look around him, you walk in the room, right? Mm. Who's the powerful man around you besides yourself? Mm. Jay-Z walk in the room, he got at least five other powerful men, millionaire men next to him mm -hmm. that's a part of his team that mm. he's about. That's mm. what we got to be about. I'm thinking that's what, I'm coming, like I said, Russell Simmons, Def Jam, intern, and seeing a whole bunch of black employees, seeing Russell hire them. I'm thinking this is what we about to do. Mm. Right. But he from the hood, so he on some... So you think he's he, gonna cut it short? Do you right, think he right. he think that you was making money behind his back? Absolutely not. There was no money. There was times I would bring him money. He's like, where you get that from? I would show him money that we made out of people putting up posters and pictures and we people standing in front of him. Yo, my boy Flix did that. Right. His extra five. Let me see your pocket, shot. He think you got some more money. <laughs> Bro, I'm giving you money you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't, yeah. you know what I mean? So Yo, it's just crazy. a different dude, bro. But uh -huh. that's just the game, man. Everybody different in this, man, you know? Mm -hmm. But I, I ain't on that time. But, you know I, what I mean? but I can understand what Gat was alluding to as far as like opportunity-wise. I get what you're saying and I totally get it. I've mm -hmm. been in that situation. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you helped build a house... Mm -hmm. Right, you laid the cement, you put the concrete together, right? Mm -hmm. You put first floor, the second floor, the third floor, and you said, All right, come in. Yeah, now you can come in, and we're going, we going, we now we're going to rent out units and do this and make money doing that, right? Uh huh. So, it, metaphorically, right? So, but also, it's like, All right, I helped build this, and he helped take it to the next level, right? Yes, with your help, yes, right? And now it's like, are you still grateful for the opportunity? Absolutely grateful. Because he could have. What I'm saying is, he could have left you. He yeah. could have been like, he could have went to where he went yep. and said, "Yo, man, I'm good, good looking. Yeah, I'm I'm where I need to be." But he brought you. Oh, I done seen so many rappers just use people, people, people to get what they, yeah. they they did. That's right. what this rap shit about. Right. Nobody appreciates shit in hip hop, bro. Mm -hmm. So I done learned that early. You know what I mean? So, but for me, I know my value. Right, right, right. You got to know your own value, know not just worth. looking at the man you're standing next to. Right. So that's why I'm still here, still going, sign more after him. It wasn't just him that made me. Yeah, what other, um, not to deflect, but what uh, there's other artists you have helped get in the industry and get signed, right? I mean, after I, after I left G-Unit, um, I took a break, started doing producer conference, because I was tapped in with all these producers where I was getting them placements, so they getting money. So we like, yo, let's educate them, let's get them in the network. Let them meet all the a &Rs, all the publishers. Give them back. Give them back. What producers oh, were good. that? Oh, man, from S1, Jake One, mm. so many producers. Kanai Finch. That's my guy, Kanai. You know, Kanai, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That Kanai 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 just kept going, right? And still here doing their thing. Much more than that, right? Mm. So then um, I get a call from uh, Chris Lighty and my boy KP, who's mm. from Atlanta. And they're like, yo, you should take this meeting with LA, LA Reed. Mm. Like, yo, I'll take it. Let's do it. So Chris come to me with the meeting, sit down. I meet L.A. Reid. L.A. Reid, me and him and Chris talk. A month later, I get a contract to be senior vice president of Def Jam. Mm. So I go to Def Jam. A month after I get my deal, I sign Big Crit. Mm. Then probably eight months later to a year, I signed 2 Chains. Mm. You signed oh, 2 Chains? I signed 2 Chains. Now, 2 Chains was doing his thing. Yeah, he, had, he was down with DTP. He was down with DTP, but this was at a moment where... He brought himself out of that. He too. brought himself out of that, and he was kind of having issues. Mm -hmm. But those contracts was keeping him kind of tapped in and tied in. Mm -hmm. right. Now, here I come, knowing 2 chains from just being a whole other dude when I go to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Real one, too. So he is always pulling up. So I spent a lot of time with him with Buck, and I got to see how just real nigga and good dude he was in the music. And he dropped right. that mixtape. I'm hearing these records. I'm like, wait a second, man. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, we got to sign it. We got to bring them back to the label. Like, they're like, huh, huh? They, first, they question me. Records start going. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you get that meeting. Me and Chains, we get that going. And Chains is like one of the first, like, where I, him and his, his manager, Tech, big up to Tech, 
where I realized, because they had that mixtape that they had put out. True. Mm -hmm. Def Jam True. wanted yeah. to grab that. They was like, nah, you ain't buying this master. This is us. Mm. Smart brothers. Mm -hmm. So they was able to keep making that money, but then they uh, Def Jam had to immediately focus on a new record mm. instead of what was already going on. Right. And that's when based on the true story came, the record with Drake came, mm -hmm. Kanye, and then Kanye came in and was trying to sign him, it was too late. Good music, so yeah. he ended up just producing for him. Every old one, Lil Wayne, look at he about to drop the record with Lil Wayne, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they got to single out right now. Everybody yeah. wanted to sign him. Right. But I was like, here, yeah, this is you. You get your own label. I ain't taking them from you. I'm just the A&R. I'm going to give you the opportunity to grow on your own and build your other brand. And that's what he did. And he kept going from there. Made a million. Hold on, hold up. You got to give it up for that. You got to give it up for that. Chains kill them, man. Shout out yeah, to Yeah, shout out to 2 Chains. nothing you know else, the full circle moment, because you went from an intern to a VP. A senior vice president. president. Right? Yeah, that's and crazy. And then L.A. Reid, as he seen me moving, this and he... He actually was like, yo, I need you to help me do this. Help me do that. So then I a and Big Boy from Outkast album, mm. Red Man mm -hmm. album. Mm -hmm. Which Red Man Which Red? Yeah. He's a Red Man fan, so he's- Man, his last too, album man. on Def Jam. Definitely. Okay. His last what, album on Def Jam. Was that Malpractice? Was that Malpractice? I think so. It might have been my Malpractice. It was his last was album. Me and okay. Red Man, just me and him in the studio. Nobody else. And he, mm. Me and him got to Bond. Then I did Jada Kiss. Top five album, mm -hmm. mm. you know what I mean? Got Acorn oh, on shit. the red, all kind of shit, like real a and work. Me and Jada, I go to Roch, um, over, over to New Rochelle, where was he at? Yonkers. 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 Lock in with him, we made some records. Not just a and but we really making records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then boom, so now he's seeing me move. Then he asked me to fix a few problems that he was having, like Shine was signed, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get the delivery. Mm. That's when he's doing the Godfather, Buried Alive. And this was another thing that brought another issue with me and Fifty, because I guess him and Shine had an issue at the time, and I had to a &R the project because Irv Gotti left. Mm -hmm. And he was the actual a &R, mm -hmm. but he didn't get it delivered. And like I tell you, I get it delivered. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, speak went to Steve O office. Steve O was real tight with Shine, mm -hmm. and he put me on the phone. Then I had some other homies, some real blood homies and whatever, they was tapped in. We made some calls. Me and Sean got some mixes done. Album never came out, but the record got delivered. This mm -hmm. is when he came home from jail. When he came home from jail, yeah. got that big deal with Def Jam. Right. Mm -hmm. Then LA left Def Jam because the spin was crazy. They kind of, I guess, they, you know, he moved on. He went into doing TV. So right. Def Jam was at this place where Def Jam was it was bad, bro. Yeah, yeah was the it? The hashtag was, was Def Jam back at the time. It was bad, bro. Wasn't that at the time when, it, when Def Jam was like about to like, be obsolete Boom. and who and somebody came and Redman. Redman came in. It was Redman? Yeah, it was Redman. Mm -hmm. Yo, know, at the time I remember, you had they didn't have no deliveries. Mm -hmm. So you got someone like Ghostface pulling up every winter just dropping an album. They like all the legends that was already a part of the catalog, that's the ones they depended on. Because mm -hmm. nobody knew. And then Kanye just kept eh. and then you know, of course Jay did what Jay did, but Jay was out by that time. Right. It was really bad at the time, man. Mm. Really bad. But how'd and you end up with The, the one that brought it back was Two Chains, if you ask me, yo. Okay. Fair okay. enough. Two Chains brought Def Jam back. Mm. Interscope? Interscope. Never worked for Interscope, but had the joint venture through, through G I mean. Unit. So I'm president of G Unit, so I dealt with the whole, you know, Chris Clancy, Kelly Clancy, you know, all of the DJ, Jimmy Iovine, everybody mm -hmm. from Interscope. I was the one in the action. Mm -hmm. So it was like I worked there, but it was my through my joint venture. You worked I, with um, Slaughterhouse? Yeah, I did for a quick minute, probably what two weeks, bro. What happened with that? <laughs> <laughs> what happened with that situation? Two weeks, yo, God two damn. weeks. All right, so Paul, you know, me and Paul got tight after working with all the fifty stuff, and um, he was getting ready to to sign Slaughterhouse, and they were working, but they needed a manager. Mm -hmm. They all had individual managers, but he didn't see no one that actually that he felt could handle it. Right. So I came in because he knew I could handle it. Mm -hmm. But yo, two weeks in, after just seeing how they all moved together and how they were rocking, I couldn't deal with that. Coming from the unit, it was one leader. It was one to sit. Right. Who was that? Fifth. One rule. There's nothing else to go through. It's not mm -hmm. Yale's opinion, Banks, none of those mattered. Mm -hmm. Right. It was fifth. So when I had this, you hear Joe clashing with Royce and this person with that, and then I'm like, yo, this is a little Oh, weird. so they was riffing. Just mm -hmm. nuts. You know, Royce was going hard with the lick at the time, so it just it was dysfunctional, bro. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And for me, I wasn't signing up for that. So I just called Paul like, yo, Paul, I can't do this, bro. Mm. I can't. It's too I, much. I just couldn't. Too heavy on the head. <laughs> I didn't see it. I'm, I'm not going to mm. keep you here too much longer, but I, I mean, I, you got the new project out now. That's right. Nah, fuck, I got 10 more questions. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay, man. I know you're still, you. still rocking out as an executive, but it, it must feel good to get back to like really put your hands in production the way you, you like to. Yeah. Now, nah, my, 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 my love is passion is music, making music. You know what I mean? And also finding new talent and letting the world see that before. Every time I find someone, I'll be telling y'all that he next, and then two years later, he the one. I'm always like two, three years ahead of everyone. You do that all the time, man. You know what I mean? So, you know, I- Nobody I, listens to me, though. <laughs> so this album is me getting in, the, in my real element of producing, mm -hmm. working with other, you know, real dope producers like um, my boy Jay Boogie, you know what I mean? Or my boy Siege Monstrosi, who come in and collab with me. Mm -hmm. But then all this new talent coming from Queens. My homie King Soul, my mm -hmm. homie DB9, my homegirl Poison from Southside. Got to work you know with my mean? homie Champ. That nigga got some beats. My boy Quan Champ, let's go. Champ, Champ let's, let's go. go. Champ, yeah, yeah. Champ. stop gonna playing. Talk, man. Gonna talk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Quan, who was with Nas from VA, he's on the album. Just all dope dude. Quan Mega and some legends like Rock Marcy worked mm. with Joey Badass as well and just mm. blend it all in. Do what I'm doing. Mm. But bringing these new ones up as well as working with the ones that are already out here and keeping it going. Right. Because there's fine. a lot of people sitting on music right now that ain't putting it out. Yes. Right, right. Right. And that's why we're 40% down right now. Well, everybody could be That's just one going, reason. That ain't the only that's reason. That's one reason. That ain't the only reason. That ain't the only reason, but it's also what these A&Rs are doing. All drill, all bullshit. They only started one, the trend. Kind, one trend. They don't know how to stand out and find something early or find something conscious. Because like you said, they're part of the system. You see, if they're part the of system the system, is, the system is just like in the film industry. When the, when the CIA went to all the directors and told them, yo, y'all got to make movies about aliens... That's all the movies was about. Mm. Y'all got to make movies about slavery. That's all the movies is about. Mm. Right now, this industry is all about programming this next generation to think one way. Pardon mm. me. You mm. know what I'm saying? And there's no conscious rap. There's no one telling you something. There's a few, but it's just not standing out. It's being overlooked. It's all being overlooked. Well, it's not balanced at all. It's not mm -hmm. balanced at all. It's, it's not balanced. And if you go to a label, they're not the one signing it. That's an indie artist just breaking his way or someone who broke their way already, like Kendrick mm -hmm. Cole. You got new guys like the Russell coming up and Simba, you know. Russell, yeah, yeah. They, they Shout out to Simba, something. man. Shout out Simba to my Russell Aries, Simba, bro, right they, they there, They saying man. something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You got Benny the Butcher killing it that's giving you that hip-hop that we love. Conway mm -hmm. there. But it's it's a new vibe. It's not something that you feel is only old music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Benny and them all way killing it. You know what I'm saying? For Zelda. So we need that. Right. We, we got it. We just, people got to know where to look. And we we got to know where to look, but it ain't nowhere to find it. It used to be... MTV raps and BT jams and yeah, did it, did it, did BT and it's like one little thing you can watch besides Revolt and that's it. If you're right. watching TV, right. the rest you got to be searching. How, how much you know how to search on YouTube if you don't know what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Well, you could always pull up on us. I'm definitely shout somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely shout yeah, somebody nah, out every some, episode. But sometime, real quick, I just want to say, um, shout money. Definitely appreciate your contribution to hip hop Thank in you. general. Thanks. Like not knowing. Your background was so immense like that, mm -hmm. as far as what you've done and different trends you've set and you, things you've turned, made hotter, took young artists, seen, seen ahead. Definitely appreciate you for Thank all of that stuff. You. Thank you, man. Um, I feel like sometimes, though, we complain, and this is not to you, but we complain about how there's a lack of what we're used to, right? Our generation is different from this generation that's yeah, out here right different. now. And there are a plethora of artists that we don't know about that are fire, right? That are, <clears throat> excuse me, that are connected to the generation of hip hop that we do love, mm -hmm. right? That go through the process of artist development, that make great content, that have bars, that have fucking depth in their lyrics, dope production. We just don't see them. Yeah, they're not forefronted. Yeah, they're not they, in the they forefront. They don't get a deal until they actually make it on their own. Right. These but then when you see, don't have, but then when you see, researchers, they don't have right, the money right. to push their numbers shit. before they actually give deals. I'm trying to, that's you why we're I believe in you down. before any number. Mm. When I can see your future, say that again. That, I see your future. I'm signing you before you make it. You I believe in you. Mm -hmm. Right now, you gotta make it to make it. 
which is crazy. Got you. So if you yeah. got a hundred thousand followers, they are gonna fuck with you. What what what's Your the line? What's the line? We be watching video music box and the box and everything oh, else God. and finding what was happening. MTV, yo, all that shit. There was a right. this man sat here and, and got at me like, yo, you must be getting a bag to be shouting these people out. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and I said to him, bro, if these people could afford to pay me to do that. They wouldn't need me to, to do, do it. That. They have mm. the streams, the views. That's whatever. how you know you He's genuinely like the If the bread exactly. was already there, shout out to Don Mooney, shout out to Amir Ali, shout out to Saba the Goddess, shout out to Shah Summers, shout out to mm. um, uh, fucking, shout out to O'Henny Savant, shout out to like. Will Sully, Ali Vegas, all of everybody. Yeah, like, <laughs> everybody you know? We can dance this dance. So shout everybody. out to Razor. Like these are these the old dudes who I'm watching. Dope artists. This Marcus killer, Clay. Man. Jay Mars, brought Mars Fly Robotics, great. you know what I mean? There's so many of All them over. out there. Coast Contra. There's so many of them out there. Yep, Contra's If dope. people just knew where to, bro, we could, we could dance this dance all day. I just have one last question. Yes, I'm sir. i let you go. Do you feel as if your loyalty has been rewarded? That's overlooked in hip-hop, man. That, the morals. That's not what I the, asked the mor- is, It is overlooked, absolutely. You Do you feel like your loyalty has been rewarded? By money, yeah. For the work I put in, yeah, we good. But <laughs> but it's more than that, though. You know what I mean? It's the respect for someone that's helping someone that... Like, my goal was to see help. Like, I'm out the hood. Get everyone that I was talented out the hood. Find different different units. Go to mm-hmm. Robbie Smurda and them. Get them a deal. Get them out the hood. You said Bobby? Bobby. Oh, okay. Bobby, Smurf. Get yeah. them out the hood. My goal was to do that. Like, go to people that were talented and find them. And, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just not reciprocated in that space, though. But it's, it's just hip-hop, though. Maybe the next move is making the hood a place that you don't need to leave. But we'll talk about that in another And making a documentary, Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, yep. Sean documentary. Sean Money Excel. Sean Money Excel. Sean Money Motivation. New project, go get that right now. Message to the streets out now, man. Check it out. BQE, get the money. (laughs) Please get the money. Yo, we out. It's all around. Look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill Nowadays I bump side A Traffic on bumper to bumper Stuck on the highway 